Welcome to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode with my co-host, Ryan Ketchens. Man, listen, I, I, I even got lost for words because I already know <laughs> it's about to be crazy. I already know. We got the big dog up. We got a Harley Initiated legend up in here. Y'all know this brother. And I'm so excited and blessed to have him back because y'all don't understand. To, to get these brothers up in here past 8 p.m. Oh, my goodness. It's a task, man. I really I almost had to talk him off the ledge today on the phone. Especially the good husbands. The good <laughs> Especially husbands. the good husbands, yeah, yeah. the good fathers, <laughs> the businessmen. It's tricky. But I appreciate it. We got one of the greatest speakers to man, to date. I'm telling you, and I mean that with my chest. All right? We here rocking with one of my favorite fathers, one of my favorite husbands. And just one of the best overall men that I've met in a very long time, man. Changing We're here lives. rocking with Jeremy Anderson. Welcome back yeah, to Hardly Initiated. It, Absolutely. Y'all having me. How y'all feeling? Look, it's yeah. needed, man. It's needed. How you yeah. feeling? Good. I'm ready to go. Okay, good, <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> you know, so my girl was like, babe, really? I was like, hey, boo, look, I got, I'm on assignment tonight. Yeah. You know, help some brothers and some sisters out. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I like so, that. Yeah, I'm ready to get it. And it's the third time you've been on the episode. Yeah. I know the first time you came. Wow. We spoke about marriages. Yeah. The second time, we, we got some in-depth on sexless marriages, which that was a, I mean, that episode. Oh, yeah, it's still changing lives. It's still, it's changing, still lives. changing lives. Right. And now we had to bring you back for the three P. Yeah. yeah, you left right. a major footprint, you know, on the channel. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you became a lot of people's favorite rapper after that episode. <laughs> and um, a lot of people, we always shout out to the members. Okay, shout out to everybody with them badges. I see them new fresh badges y'all got the here. The new badges just dropped. It just dropped. Y'all see the members in here. Got new badges next to it. We listen to what you guys are asking and requesting. And y'all ask us to bring this brother here back for a live because the live is a little different. Mm. Jerry was asking me a little earlier, like, what's the, how this? I was like, don't worry. You're going to see. <laughs> All right? You're going to see. But he's in here with the community and with the family. And I'm excited to go into this episode because in this episode, y'all already see the thumbnail. We are talking that sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice for your marriage, for your relationship? And we're going to go into it today. But first, Ryan, tell the people what we got coming and what yes. we got going on. So real quick, I want to welcome everybody that's tuning in from Facebook. Listen, we're not going to do this Facebook thing too long, all right? So y'all yeah. got to make sure that you make it all the way over to YouTube because the chat is about to go crazy tonight. Now, also, guys, if you see this, the new hardly initiated logo and badges have just been dropped. So yes. if you look next to your name, if you're a part of the YouTube or the channel membership, you will see that HI. Now, of course, if you're new to the channel, you got to start off white belt. So we got you the, the white ninja style badge. But if you had three months, you probably got the orange logo. And the next stop is that six month badge. So make sure y'all work hard for that. Now, super chats, all super chats going to be highlighted on the screen. But any super chat at $10 or above is going to get a special shout out from myself or Tyshawn. Yes, and just yes, remember yes. that this month, as well as last month, all of the super chats contribute to us getting the studio sound treated. And guys, we are probably, I'm looking at this, only about 900 bucks away from our goal because the Cash App and the PayPal donations went crazy was when Kendall Pickle came. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So guys, do this do this favor for me real quick. Go ahead and hit the like button. As many times as you guys hit the like button, that's as many people as Facebook is going to share this out to. And the last thing, I am going to drop the link so you guys can go ahead and register for our email list so we can get out to you those top 10 dating and connection questions. <clears throat> but hold tight. We got a lot of stuff that working on yes. but be patient with us and just make sure that if you haven't go ahead and send us all your information right now yes so listen we're gonna get into it and yeah welcome and shout out to everybody that made the live show i'll be seeing people on the sunday night transformations when we drop our sunday shows and hey, so glad we finally made the live no the live is monday and wednesday at 8 p.m all right but we're working so hard that we drop another banger interview on sundays for you guys the content is not stopping the transformations will not stop but for everybody in here tonight, y'all gonna get blessed. Mm. And as a matter of a fact, let's get straight into it. Yeah. Because I, you know what's interesting, JA, when we bring strong men onto the platform, they tend to always speak from a place of accountability, right? right? And that's how I like to speak. Right. But accountability on the internet is demonized. Accountability in many ways, when you hold men, even or women accountable, you are, all of these names get thrown at you. And the thing about it is, in the last episode we had with you, you spoke so deeply on your marriage. Mm -hmm. And you really let, open the hood up and let us in. And you spoke about all the ways that you sacrificed. 
in right. your marriage in order for it to be successful. And many of the people, that's all they heard. They just heard Jeremy's sacrifice. And it sounded right. like you was just, you was just in a, in, in a, in, in a crazy situation yeah. that made absolutely no sense. Right. So let's bring some balance to that conversation today. Hmm. As it relates to, we know your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your wife's facts sacrifice a little bit right yeah, for sure. because as a woman as a wife how should she be sacrificing in the relationship as well so we could be able to have a healthy healthy long-term relationship as a couple and as a, a as a married couple good question man so look um so me and my wife was having um worship actually this morning right we was going through our devotion uh, you know, we do that in the mornings and then we, you know, we read it, we pray, we discuss what we talked about, we pray. That's how we start our mornings. So my girl was reading the devotional and it was kind of talking about the importance of marriage and, and you really serving your spouse. So like it's her responsibility to be like, okay, what does my husband need? What's going to put him in the best position? What's going to bless him? How does he like it? What does he need? How can I support him? But at the same time, it's my responsibility to be like, okay, what does she need? How does she like it? How can I bless? How can I spoil her? So I, I tell people all the time, like it really should be two-sided in the ideal situation. There are some situations though, where the wife is serving, the wife is looking out, the wife is being patient and the husband is not. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so it, it might feel lopsided, yeah. but you ain't, but, but I tell people all the time in relationships, you don't come and bring a hundred percent. It's not like 50, 50. It's like, you bring a hundred percent. I bring a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like you bring a hundred, I'm gonna bring a hundred. And so the challenge most people have is, well, whatever you do for me, if it's not, you know what I'm saying? If I don't do this for you, or if you don't do this for me, I, I'm, that don't work. You got to be willing to handle whatever it is you're going to handle, whatever it is you're going to do. You got to be willing to say, I'm going to do that regardless of what you give me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, yeah. so often in relationships, like folks be like, well, I'll do this, but he don't do that. All right. Well, you just handle your business. That's almost like the defense on the football team saying, well, I ain't going to stop them from scoring because y'all ain't put up points. Bro, you got a job to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so me and my wife, we look at this thing like we offensive defense. You got a job to do. I got a job to do. If you don't handle your business, that don't give me a reason not to show up. And then she like, and if you don't handle your business as a husband, as a priest, as a provider of protection, that don't mean I'm not going to still love you and honor you and look out for you. So I tell people all the time, like, yo, you got to be balanced with it. And in a perfect situation, both spouses are showing up, both spouses are showing love. But there are times when it's just like, all right, I'm really not getting what you need from what I need from you, but I'm going to make sure I give you what you need. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so that takes sacrifice. And so when me and my girl was reading it this morning and then we prayed on it, it was just like, man, we finally got to a point where it wasn't one-sided, where I was serving her, she looking out for me, or she was looking out for me, but I wasn't really receiving it. It's like, no, nah, now we both, now we got a flow. And it takes a while to get there, but it takes a lot of maturity to be okay with that. Because when you make them vows, like to death do us part, for better or for worse, like that thing is real. Yeah. And it's so easy to get caught up on, well, you ain't really taking care of my needs, or you ain't really looking out for me, so I can just fade out. Well, it's like, nah, just because I didn't handle my business, that don't mean it give you a chance not to handle your business, because now you ain't no better than me. Mm. It takes a real mature mindset to get to that point. Because oftentimes we feel like marriage and relationships is like partnerships, which it is. 50-50. Mm. But it's like, okay, because if we are partners in business, well, if you don't show up to work, well, then I ain't going to show up to work. <laughs> nah, bro, you still got a job to do. I'm going to do what you want not handling your business, but I still got to handle mine. Our, that, that reminds me of, we just had uh, Kendall Ficklin on it. He, gave his, yeah. he gave his five stages um, of manhood, and stage four was a a grown man, and he said a grown man gives love only when he receives love, right? Stage mm -hmm. four, he mm -hmm. gives love only when he receives love. Mm -hmm. And a stage five, which is a mature man, he described, he just is love. So he's able to give love really in, <clears throat> in all situations, whether mm -hmm. he receives it or not, mm -hmm. he just is love at that point in time in life. And the thing about it is when he was describing that man, I was really listening to it. And even being honest, I was like, I can't say <laughs> I'm just love. Right. Every room I walk into. Right. If right, I'm right, not right, feeling right, right. love. Right. right that, I mean, just, right. Just, just, just being real. Right. So even in a marriage, I can imagine if you not experiencing love. Right. And still being able to give it is just a that that that. That's hefty right there. Right. When did you develop that? Like, was that something that you walked into your marriage with or was that like a muscle, that maturity? Was it a yeah, muscle that you had to yeah. build? Good question. No, definitely a muscle I had to build. 
because you know, when it's like you get in your marriage and you realize that, like, oh, this not what I was expecting. So now you got a decision made. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you honor the covenant or do you be like, yo, this ain't it? And so for me, it took a lot of growth and a lot of maturity, a lot of time with God, set with a lot of elders, a lot of men's groups, like really growing myself internally. So people would look at me, they're like, yo, but your vantage point, you different. I never really thought about it like that. You hella disciplined. It's like, yeah, but I got a strong community. You know what I'm saying? Like the word says that there is safety in a multitude of counsel. So the more people you surround yourself with, the sharper you get, iron sharpens iron. So I was really sitting at the feet of powerful, godly men. I wouldn't, you know, now I got homies. I got cats that still moving work. Like I still know them, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I'm taking, I'm not taking my counsel from them though. I'm not taking my counsel from my homie that just spent, you know what I'm saying, 8,500 in the strip club a few mm. weeks ago. Like I'm not taking counsel from him, but some other men, you know what I'm saying, that's been growing, that's been serving. Like I'm taking counsel from them. And so I just got to a point, man, where I was like, I got to work on me. And I got to get to a point where it's like, okay, she deserves better. Okay, she deserves this. Okay, she deserves that. Because when, when I went to her mama and I asked for her hand in marriage, I promised her mama I was going to take care of her. Mm. I promised her mama, bro, I was going to take care of her heart. Like I'm a man of my word. You know what I'm saying? Cats be going, asking for their girl's hand in marriage and promise the father, I'm going to love your daughter. But then when things ain't right or she ain't giving it to you like you want or whatever, whatever happens, it's like, well, what happened to that promise you made to him? So I remember going to, you know, my, uh, my wife's mom, um, Debbie, rest in peace. I remember going to her saying, hey, she, at the time, I ain't even had no job, bro. She's like, how you going to take care of my daughter? I was like, I promise you, I'm going to take care of her. I'm about to get a legit job. Like, I'm going to handle my business and I'm going to take care of her heart. So I still, keep, I still keep that promise to this day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so even though I might not be, it might not, it might not feel like it's mutual because we both have seasons that we in. I'm just like, yo, this is the commitment that I, that I made, but it takes a while to kind of get to that point. So it was definitely a muscle that grew over the years once I realized the need, once I realized how much, you know what I'm saying, how much love she deserved. See, I, I flipped the script, bro. I started looking at my wife like, yo, you God's, you God's daughter. I started moving with a different type of energy. I was like, yo, let me be cautious on how I deal with you because you God's daughter. You're not just Debbie's daughter. You're not just my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, you God's daughter. So like, let me be cautious on how I deal with you. So God told me years ago, how you deal with my daughter is how I'm going to deal with you. You continue to want my favor, then you better favor her. You better honor her. Because it was times I was doing stuff for my girl, and I was like, man, I don't even think she deserved me. And God was like, bro, you don't deserve me. You had an Uzi put to your head. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, bro, you've been moving work. You know, so many times the cops don't pull you over, and you knew you had packs in the trunk. Like, you should be in prison right now. You want to talk about what you don't deserve? You don't deserve this crib you're living in. You don't deserve to get to travel the way you did to travel. So I really got to a point where I was just like, all right, God, like, I don't want no smoke. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, let me just keep honoring my girl and meet her where she at. And that just grew over the years. Now, you mentioned honoring the covenant. So I'm very curious about that because we get, you know, guys mm -hmm. who come on the show and talk about that. But I don't think we ever actually got a, a, a definition hmm. of what a covenant is and why a covenant is important. Yeah. 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 So when it comes to marriage, you know, like people talk about, you know, saying you, you're going to share your vows, you know, but when you make a vow to God, like you in covenant, you know what I'm saying? Like when you stand before that priest, you know what I'm saying? By the powers invested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. Like you bringing out the Bible, like God's a part of that. You in God's church, you making a promise, you making a covenant. So when you say for better or for worse, when you say for rich or for poor, when you say in sickness and in health, when you say till death do us part, you basically saying, God, I'm committed to loving and marrying this person regardless of what happens. No matter how much money we lose, no matter how sick, until we die, we in covenant together. And if it wasn't for the covenant, if I didn't take that covenant serious, bro, I would have been got divorced. Mm. No, straight up, bro. Like, y'all, hey, people, I had somebody tell me one time, somebody was just like, man, Jeremy, you know what I'm saying? This new season, you're gonna like talk to more people and let them know, you know, that your marriage ain't perfect. I was like, I ain't never stood on stage and said my marriage is perfect. Just because I'm proclaiming my love and my devotion for my girl, that don't mean everything has been perfect. <laughs> right. Like, there was definitely a season, bro, where I was several seasons where I was like, this ain't it. And I feel like my heart was being broken. And it was seasons where she felt like I broke her heart. But I just got to a point where I was just like, you know what? We in covenant together. So we got to make this worse. So now I'm going to God like, hey, bro, that's your girl. That's your daughter. Like, that's the one you gave me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the one that you put in my life. Like, that's the one you told me to marry. Like, I made a vow to her. I made a covenant with you, with her. But she ain't doing this. She ain't doing So I went to God. My counselor told me probably seven, eight years ago. They was like, yo, any issues you have with, with your wife, take it up to God. 
They was like, stop going to your girl for stuff. Because I realized there's certain things she can't change. Yeah. She can't just instantly change her hormones. She can't instantly just change her health issues. She can't instantly snap her finger and be like, I'm not suffering from depression no more. Like, no, nah. I went to God like, hey, bro, she's struggling. And God was like, if you can be strong enough long enough, she's going to be all right. But you got to hang in there. But it was hard. And so that covenant, because I take my covenant, my relationship with God serious, it put me in a position where I was like, man, I got to tap all the way in. I got to like make whatever adjustments I got to make. I got to figure out a way to make this work. But I was asking God, like, man, you got to give me your spirit because I still got that monster inside me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know no, exactly I, what you're yeah. no, I ain't going to hold you, bro. Like, right. yeah. you looking at me like I'm just some, ho I'm a man of God, but like, don't get it twisted. I die daily to the flesh. I got to crucify the flesh daily, bro. It's a monster inside me. You know what I'm saying? And so I be having to really kill the flesh every single day and live in the spirit, which is why I get up so early to have that time with God so he can saturate with me. If not, bro, I'm out here down bad. Yeah. I'm out here on some monster stuff. And so yeah. Yeah. I really be trying to, you know, the word says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Like I'm a new creature, but I got to continue to remain free. Who the sun says free is free indeed, but you got to continue to remain free. It ain't just like once they always say, like, everything's perfect now. It's like, nah, I got to keep working on this thing every single day. It's almost like a, a bodybuilder or a guy that get really, really sculpted, really, really in shape. Where it's not like, yep, I won this award. I can go back to eating um, Cheetos and, and Tootsie Rolls and, and just snacking and eating pizza and fried chicken. It's like, nah, bro, you're going to lose it. If you want to keep that physique, you got to keep doing what got you that physique. The only way to keep the gains is if you had it every day. Come on, bro. Wow. Just like that. Every single day, man. And, and, and that's... When you talk about like a, the the perfect marriage, just just for people get context, because I think that's what people do. Kind of, you know, when they hear you speak, when they see you, um, they hear the how well you speak of your wife. They can't easily assume that that everything is all good up under the roof, under the household. But I, I want to know, like, like what is that? What what is what what does conflict look like with you and your lady? You know, what I'm saying like are, arguments, like just basic things, like or, or, or how do you handle that? Is that going on in your household? So, yeah. How does that work? So, good question. So, I'll say this, and people probably not gonna believe me, but man, me and Tracy don't be arguing like that, bro. We we'll have disagreements, but I I don't think we ever had a blowout fight argument where we was yelling at each other throughout the throughout the entire throughout the fourteen years of marriage, bro. I can't think of not one time where we was yelling at each other and, and just angry. Yeah. Now, do we have disagreements? Yeah, for sure. Like, are we not on the same page, catching attitudes, saying little slick stuff? Absolutely. But never to a point where it's like, nigga, I told you. Like, nah, we ain't on that. Bitch, nigga, you ain't. Nah, we ain't on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, lead at the basketball wise, bro. Like, we ain't on that. But I don't, But let me be clear. But only because I set the tone in my home. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, bro. My wife got that dog in her too, nigga. Like, don't play with it. Like, if I was really on some rah, rah, rah stuff, I promise you she would clap back. So when I be having cats like, bro, my wife said this, my wife cussed me out, that ain't come out of nowhere. When did you raise your voice? When did you cuss at her? I promise you, bro, I could, I could pull out a dark side of my girl. I promise you, I could talk to her a certain type of way. I can treat her a certain type of way. My wife don't get pushed into nothing, bro. She ain't no sucker. She will stay in her ground. That's why we would bump heads. And I'm like, dang, you stubborn. But God was like, bro, she's just strong. Mm. Can you tame a strong woman like that? You know what I'm saying? Can you work on her heart? Can you work on her mind? Can you govern your tongue to see that she's just struggling and she's in a weird place right now and meet her where she at? Or you want some little boy stuff, some jealous stuff, some you ain't going to beat your chest like you can't call it. Nah, bro. So it took a while for us to get here, but I, from the beginning, bro, because I ain't moved like that. And for me, that anger that rises inside me, it can be ugly. And so I don't never want to see my wife see that side. She told me a few uh, months ago, she was teasing me. She was like, the Hulk came out. I said, boo-boo, let me tell you something. You ain't seen the Hulk yet. <laughs> I told her like flat out like you ain't seen the Hulk yet like she never think, seen it over the she ain't never seen it well one time when I was moving work before we was married somebody had broken to one of our nightclubs and she seen a glimpse of the Hulk you know what I'm saying <laughs> Uh, they had stole the safe and some other stuff, but we'll have story time off camera, right? Okay. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like like you ghost. Know. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Real past life. It was crazy. We're a little kidnap situation, but my man made it back home. We got everything back, but it was wow. a crazy. But she was just like, so she, I was like, but that was like 15, 16 years ago. Though I'm a new man now. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> like, okay. And so with all that being said, man, we don't really be having arguments. We disagree. We bump heads, we be catching attitudes, might even go a half a day without talking. Mm. Like sometimes it'd be like that, but I ain't never to a point where I'm gonna raise my voice and I'm gonna yell at you because it's gonna escalate and it's gonna get higher and higher. And she ain't wired the type that's gonna step down and I ain't the type that's gonna step down. So we don't even let it get there. 
Now, I remember when we interviewed um, Shannon and Shirley, right? Yeah. They made uh, a very controversial statement. It went everywhere. They said marriage is the one relationship that will bring the darkest side out of you, hmm. right? I remember hmm. that was Shirley that actually said that one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people had a lot of opinions about that. She just talked about how just that union will bring sides to you that you never knew existed. Right. And you will see parts of yourself you didn't know that you had. Mm -hmm. So is it safe to say that like your your wife is the person that may have caused the most pain in your life to date? Um. So shout out to Shannon and Shirley, Marriage Inc. My, my Marriage is Dope uh, podcast squad. I love them too, man. I'll say this. Um, yes, the marriage that who you married to can bring out. It's the one person that can bring out the darkest side and cause you the most pain. So if you were to ask me, AJ, you know, saying who has caused you the most pain in your life? I would tell you hands down, it was my wife. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's not because like, she's not a bad person. Like she's freaking amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But because we were so close and we, be, you know, like we doing life together, it's just like there are certain things. There was a season where I needed from her and it, because she wasn't in a position to, she couldn't give it to me. And that just, it just broke my heart. And so through a lot of marriage counseling over the years, you've been working through a lot of stuff. We're on a whole nother level now, but there was a really dark season. And a lot of the pain and anguish that I went through was because me and her wasn't in one accord. And I was just like, man, I'm in this covenant. The reason why she caused me so much pain, because I was like, I ain't going to leave. I'm in this covenant, so I got to stay in the pocket. It's like a quarterback. It's like, okay, I don't want to run. I don't want to scramble, but you just keep getting hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just keep sacking you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man. But at the same time, though she's the one that caused me in my life the most pain, she's also the one that gave me the most gain. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like I wouldn't have built this multi-million dollar business. I wouldn't be the man I am today. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing and experiencing what I'm experiencing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you ask me also, hey, bro, who has brought the most joy to your life? Come on, man. You feel me? Like, <laughs> right, I would right. say my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who do you have the most experiences with? Like, who do you have? Who you share the most memories with? Like, who have you had the most uh, great times with? Like, who's the number one person? If you could choose one person that got you to where you are today besides God, I would say my wife. And so sometimes that's just how that dynamic is. And so though she is the one, you know, and if you and if you ask her, hey, who calls you the most pain or who hurt you the most? She might say she might say me because we got married. We was young, bro. I think my wife was like maybe 23 when we got married. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like so like we was wow. young trying to figure this thing out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So though, yeah, she caused me the most pain. She also gave me the most gain. Now, how much because I know you said you got married young. Now that you look back on it, is there a certain level that you would have preferred to have been at before you got married? Or is there a certain age? Like, how would somebody, uh, you know, a single man who's, you know, evaluating a woman for a long term situation, how would they know if now is the right time? Yeah, uh, I, I think it depends on, you know, their level of maturity. Okay. Like, I know folk, brother, straight, straight graduate from high school, do a year or two community college, get married, and look up 15 years later, and they still on some happily ever after. I think it depends on the personality. Okay. I think it depends on their makeup. I think it depends on the origins and the foundation of the relationship. And I think it depends on their past and their family history. Because if you got two people, two individuals, a man and a woman, and they get married, and both of them come from great families, with a mother and a father and a mother and father that was married that didn't divorce, that that concept alone gives them so much more of a fighting chance. But if you have someone that comes from a home where his father wasn't present and he never saw his mom married, and then you got the wife that came from a home, but father was a rolling stone and he was out here and had these little side pieces, like, bro, they carry baggage and damage that they don't even realize. So I tell people all the time, like, you know, take your time when it comes to this marriage thing, mm -hmm. like date. And I tell people all the time, like, oh, if you in a relationship and this is hard and the relationship is not working and y'all always fighting and y'all straight miserable, but y'all talking about marriage. If you can't do boyfriend and girlfriend, you definitely can't do marriage because <laughs> marriage only going to amplify the situation. Got it. For sure. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. We, we, uh, we had a lot of people that talks about they are in therapy mm -hmm. um, during the boyfriend and girlfriend situation. Mm -hmm. It's interesting yeah. because- <laughs> You know, you know, on one side, you know, people, you got a one group of people that's like, oh man, therapy's amazing. Yes, you should always be in therapy, blah, blah, blah. 
And you got another group of people that look, if y'all ass need therapy, you're in the girlfriend and boyfriend stage, then y'all just need to go ahead and, you know, run it quits. And I'm not talking about pre-marriage counseling. Right, right, right. I'm not right, talking right. about, you know, none of that. I'm right. talking about we cannot get along, so we need therapy. So right. for the young lady or the young guy that's considering therapy in a boyfriend-girlfriend situation, what you got? What, what, what kind of game you got so, for? Him? So, so it, it really depends on the, on the severity of the drama, right? Because they could be they could be in a relationship dating, but they just need some help and some counseling and therapy on communication. You know what I'm saying? On, on some triggers, like it actually might be some mild changes and adjustments that can bring a huge impact. So I'm actually in support of a boyfriend girlfriend they doing their thing they thinking about marriage but it's like right now we keep bumping heads let's sit down with somebody and mediate some things now after a year of consistent therapy and it's like y'all still ain't hitting well that's a sign but sometimes it can be as simple as you know what when you said this i thought that and then you realize oh that triggered you and then you go into the relationship a whole lot stronger so I'm actually op- I'm actually good with it. You know what I'm saying? If you go in with the mindset, like, let me get as much game as possible. Let me try to understand you. You understand me. We figure out how to communicate. And if we can't make it work in this space, yeah. then we need to fade out of it. And that's and here's my, bro, my chief operating officer, bro, Nicole Crump, or Crump's wife, she run all my companies, bro. Me and her wow. literally had to bring in a mediator because we was kind of going through some things. And so I, she was expressing things her way. I was expressing things my way. I was like, you know what? Let's bring in my CEO mentor, coach, and have him talk to us. And he, within 20, 30 minutes, we was like, oh, okay, boom. It was like super smooth. So even super high-level, professional, phenomenal, God-fearing adults sometimes need to have someone to sit down with them and help them navigate that space. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie though. Future, future wife, if we, if we got to get some therapy, I don't know. I mean, I'm still, I'm a little bit more open. <laughs> a little bit more open to what? The, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend therapy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tricky. It's tricky. I, yeah. I guess it depends again, like you said, on what the issues is, how right. petty the issues is. Right. And, right. You but know, if it's like, if it's like serious stuff, like, man, you still cheating. Or you being violent, or you cussing me out, or you Disrespect, got temper yeah. problems, or you disrespectful, and it's like you want some ratchet. Like, then you don't even need no therapy. It's like, why would you want to spend the rest of your life with this person? Facts. But if it's just like, man, you know, maybe twice a month we get into an argument and things is weird, and I feel like you're not really listening to me. It's like, all right, well, y'all sit down with somebody so y'all can hear each other's side. And you might look up after a few sessions and be like, oh, man, we Gucci now. Yeah, they can move on from there for sure. That's fair. That's fair. And n- now, now let me let me ask you this, Jay, because I kind of hinted to this at the beginning of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Because again, I've seen many of the men come on this show that I r- absolutely respect, mm-hmm. and that I know are, are hands down real men. Mm-hmm. But depending on the message they give, the internet will call them a simp, right? <laughs> and. Yeah. The, it, that's kind of what it's turned into. I say this a lot. It's like it's one way or the other. It's mm-hmm. just very black and white nowadays. It, it, it's very black and white, but in many ways, men's accountability, just in general, has turned into simping. It's very hard to hold a man accountable for any aspect, especially in his re- relational life, mm. without him being a simp. Oh man, when Kendall Fickley came on the very first time and he said, "A man better pay them bills." Oh my God, you should have seen them comments. He was a simp. And, I, and that's a good example of a brother we know very much well is not a simp. But I say, lo, lo, long story short, with you in general, we had you and Tim Ross come on this platform. And I was really shocked at how much I heard, I, I, like what men were expressing because of how you said you just handle things in your marriage. And I want to ask you this. What would you say just to the guys? that feel as though that you might be a simp because of how you handle sacrifice and just conflict yeah. in general in your marriage. So, so you know, those comments sometimes, I sometimes, every blue moon, not often, maybe one, two percent of my comments is negative, bro. Folk know what it is. <laughs> for one, for one, I'll say this, they the real simps because if we was doing a live studio audience, they wouldn't say nothing to me. Mm. That's the reality. They won't. I ain't never had nobody come up to me to my face, but like, nigga, you a simp. So you a simp for having Twitter fingers for one. <laughs> so if I can be paid, <laughs> right. no, that's real, bro. You know what I'm saying? Cats be real tough. Like it still blow my mind, bro. When I be driving and somebody hunking my horn, I'm like, why you do that? If we was in the elevator, you'd be clutching your purse right now. But now you tough inside your car. 
I miss around to hit these brakes and make you hit the brakes and the person behind you hit you <laughs> on my head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm saying like, so I, I don't trip on that. I'm, I'm, I'm maturing more to get to the space where I always consider the source. So these guys is like, you a simp. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about, bro? Did you even go to college? Nigga, I'm putting 20, <laughs> I just put 20 more people in college, like, bro. Like, y'all seen my career, bro. Million dollar home, 7,000 square feet, pool in the bar. We got Facts. to put a basketball court. It's like, bro, you talking about a simp, bro? I got one woman that loves me still to this day, 14 years later, bro. What's a simp about that? You know what I'm saying? But these boys are simple minded and that's all they really understand. And so I don't even really get upset if I see them little comments. I always consider the source. That's almost like LeBron, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, you know what I'm saying, playing street ball, a little middle schooler, talking crazy to LeBron. He finally gets to come to the game and he up in the nosebleeds and he just come down and say, LeBron, you suck. LeBron, this is like, Bro, you can't even dribble for real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, so, right, right, right. Man, I don't pay them dudes no mind, bro. Most of them is sitting back and they feel convicted. Conviction comes in. They not where they want to be in life. They see a cat like me or Kendall or somebody else talking spicy, holding them accountable, and they don't like it. So I really mm. don't give it no energy, man. But I would tell you, I would say this here to every man listening and watching. If in your heart you feel a certain type of way, if in your heart when you hear me talking about how I love and honor and respect my wife and I govern my tongue and I treat her delicately, like if you hear that and something inside angers you, like that's something wrong with you. Would you not want that for your daughter? Would you not want that for your baby sister? Would you not want a king like me to serve her and love her regardless of if she's having a bad day or not? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, man, cats struggle with accountability and it often goes to show, you know what I'm saying, their lack of maturity. And I'm okay with that. So, so I consider the source. Let, let, let me ask you this, because Tarshawn was literally just talking about this right before you came in. And he was saying, you, I think what it was, you was looking at somebody who reposted a clip from us or yeah. reposted a part of our show. Right. And as he was looking at the person that was giving the feedback, he, Tarshawn was basically like, I felt sorry for the dude. Because I can, I think it was pretty much after seeing, physically seeing the dude, he's like, wow, this dude probably got picked on. This For dude sure. probably has a lot of issues mm. with even the most average of women. This dude probably has a lot of self-worth and self-esteem issues. So it is a level of sympathy that we have for these guys because we do know that these guys No pun need, intended. Right, right, right. Sim <laughs> sympathy. Sim right. sympathy. <laughs> but it's a level of, of sympathy that we have because these guys really do need help. So right. what is the cure? Like what for that guy who does feel like that and he's sneak, sneaking and, you know, watching this hard initiated is his sneaky link because he's sneaking and watching it. He's pissed off watching you right now. <laughs> he is. Right. He's watching, but he's watching yeah. it. What's the cure? Like what is his first step? How does he go about recovering from this, this sickness really? Yeah, man, I would just tell them that to look themselves in the mirror and ask themselves what kind of man do they want to be? You know what I'm saying? Because they might, and we might not have the same values. Mm. And so if we don't have the same values, like we ain't gonna never see eye to eye. And what got me to where I am, bro, this this over a decade of being married, 14 years, right? It's a lot of prayers, a lot of sacrifice, and a lot of fasting, a lot of counseling that got me to where I am. So I don't want no brother to look and be like, bro, he capping, bro, he ain't go nine months, he ain't do this and that. It's like, nah, it was a struggle for me to become the man I am today. And truth be told, if my wife was just, everything was awesome and she just did everything the way I wanted her to do and everything was just, I wouldn't be the man I am today. Like that, 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 that grew me. You know what I'm saying? Like the pain I went through, something deeper emerged out of that. And so when people see me speak and they like, bro, that anointing you have, I'm like, it came from pain though. It came from suffering. It came from sacrifice. It didn't just come because I'm just a, a cool dude that just like read a few books. Like I actually went through some things, which is why I have the sound I have, which is why I speak and articulate the way I do, which is why I'm passionate about this thing called marriage because I want to help as many people out in this space. So I would just say to the person that's watching, that's listening right now, and they feel a certain type of way, ask themselves like, what kind of man do you want to be? What kind of life do you want to live? And then you got to be able to plan accordingly because if you like man i want to be a man of god but well, you got to look at that you got to look at this they would probably say jesus was a sin <laughs> they would they would they say would. jesus was a sin bro man he got up on that cross man he put them put them nails through his hand man he put that crown of thorn man they was spitting on him they was beating him and he didn't say nothing he a simp and his boys was a sin that's what they would say they don't understand prophecy they don't, it was a sacrifice he really showed how strong he was by keeping himself and he didn't cause 10,000 angels to come down and wreak havoc on earth. So them same people that call me a sin for honoring and loving my wife and keeping a covenant and making the sacrifices, they probably call Jesus a sin. 
And I ain't tripping on that. And I already understand, bro, that righteousness ain't popular. Mm. Ratchetness is popular. Extremely. Righteousness is popular. Ain't nothing popular about righteousness. Not for real, for real. Like, it ain't going to go viral like if I was saying something crazy. And so I already know the world is not going, because the majority of the world is evil, bro. It's a crazy world we live in. Folks out here getting kidnapped, sex trafficking. Like, it's some sick stuff happening out here. Yeah. Folks are struggling. And so I realized that. So me being a light, in this dark world, I realize everybody's not going to be open to it. And that's okay. But prayerfully with these podcasts and this content y'all putting out there, it'll begin to work on some men's hearts and they'll start taking accountability so they can be real men. You I mentioned like I like that. You mentioned that now I'm on fast. And I want to I want to get into that for the people that may have missed for my real Harley and for the initiates that's in here. You already know. Y'all seen JA come up here and give us a story, but I want to really go into that to get some context. But first. Let's go ahead and tell the people. We, we got some things coming here. Let's let the people. Oh, yeah. we actually got to let the Facebook group go. We got to let, listen, Facebook, we love you. We done gave you a solid 37, 38 yeah, minutes. Yeah, it's did. time for you to make it over to YouTube yeah, ASAP. To YouTube, Stop and playing. the chat is, going, chat is going nuts right now. So let me check this out. Shout out to VJ. VJ getting it started per usual. She always the first one to the pun. Shout out she to Vanita does. Jackson. Welcome, everyone. Be highly motivated and like. Subscribe and become a member. Where are the super chats? VJ, indeed, 662 indeed. 662 people in here right now. Shout out Already. to that. Look, shout out to Kat Harlem and Lydia Weir for hitting a two months. I know everybody's asking about the event information for this Thursday at 8 p.m. Don't worry, guys. I will make sure that we send that out to you on the member posting on YouTube by tomorrow. So shout out to them for hitting the two months. Shout out to Tanisha Miles. She said, very refreshing to hear a solid black Christian man with such conviction about marriage, covenant, and how you honor it. And shout out to C.R. Scott, of course. C.R. Scott, she just sent it love. Listen, C.R., we appreciate you for that super chat. And uh, I think we're ready to rock. I mean, we got the badges. We got the super chats. We got no, three no, members. No, shout out no, to no, Demi, no, no. Jill, thing. and Stephanie. Last thing we need, y'all, is what, what we, got? we only got 219 likes. So, guys, please just quickly get us to 350 because it's almost 700 people in here. Get us maybe, to 350. Maybe they don't like. Maybe they don't like. Maybe they don't like. Oh, y'all don't like what Jeremy said? <laughs> you know what if y'all don't like it, y'all ain't got to <laughs> like. Maybe but for they... my people that like it, hit that like, please. <laughs> All Yo, right? I, I love these badges. But shout out to the three members that joined us, Demi, Jill, and Stephanie. This is my, my white badges. Welcome to white badges to the crew. <laughs> That's the white belt. We actually, so Ryan came up with this. We actually did the badges based on the karate, the Kara belts karate, mix you of get karate and jujitsu. Yeah. So you're white, you start out with your white belts, you What's know, this? then you yellow. go to your the yellow. yellow. Yeah. Then, then you, you got go your to orange belt. Orange. Yeah. So, you know, y'all got to keep working. Big shout out to my initiates. Y'all getting initiated in here. All right. So check it out, y'all. What I want to go to now is I want to talk about that nine month fast yeah because this and fellas i want i'm for my fellas in here i want y'all to hear this because i want y'all to keep it real at the end of this and let me know if you could have hung in there these nine months but tell me more about that nine month fast that you had to, that you experienced with your wife yeah so i would probably this was maybe around five years ago um man you know her body was failing her you know what i'm saying she had lost her mom her dad her aunt and her grandmother, bro, like, almost like her whole family, like back to back to back. I didn't know so, that. So yeah, she, she didn't even have time to grieve the next one before the aunt and then the grandma and then the dad and then the finale, like her mom. And so you're dealing with that emotional, right? And then that depression and then that grief. Um, then you deal with health issues, you know what I'm saying? Um, and endometriosis and adenomyosis and fibromyalgia. So she got three different health diagnoses, right? So it was just a lot, you know what I'm saying? She was going through the body uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. And so I'm seeing my wife, bro, a shell of herself. Not me, bro. I'm a manly man, bro. I want to smash every single day. Let me be clear, right? Like I ain't on that oh, twice a week. No, nah, nigga, I want every <laughs> single day, right? And, and I'm not, I don't put that on my girl, but I'm just saying, like, I got that desire. I got that drive inside me for every single day, right? Like, if you want it, I got what you need. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? And this is five years ago. I'm 43 now, so you can imagine where, I, where it was five years ago. So, yeah. I see all that to say, I enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And so, my wife, she wasn't able to meet my needs. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying every day. Like, I'm being silly. Like, I'm not being silly about every day, but I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I knew she was struggling on the inside. And one morning I was having my time with God. And I was like, man, God, like, like she's struggling. And God was like, yeah. He was like, you just need to make love to her. 
And I was like, but that's the thing, man. It's even, it's even painful. You know what I'm saying? Like she's dealing with all these, you know what I'm saying, issues like in, in hormones and just depression. She just, her body was literally failing her. And God was like, no, I'm not talking about making love to her body. God was like, make love to her heart. Make love to her mind. Make love to her spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, whoa. And God was like, go ahead and release her. And, he, and by, by me releasing her, that's what it was also doing. It was releasing me. Because I'm not sitting here like wondering each day, like, is she going to show me some love today? Is mm. she going to show me some love this week? I was like, you know what, boo? We're not doing this. I said, right now, you just focus on you. You get your nails done. You go get you a massage. You go for a swim. Like, you take your time. You, you do your doctor appointments. You do your counseling. You take this time. You want to sleep in, read book. You take this time for you. I was like, don't worry about. I don't. You, you sitting here trying to hold on for life. You sitting here trying to hold on to keep your body and keep your mind. Don't worry about trying to keep me. I ain't going nowhere. I told my girl that you focus on keeping your body right. You focus on keeping your heart. You focus on keeping your mind. You focus on taking your medicine, your prescription, your doctor's appointments. I ain't going nowhere. You, I, I've been, you've been prescribed to me, doggone it. You take my doses, yeah. my love every single day. So that's what I was on, bro. And so I, I didn't plan for it to be nine months. God set me up with the okie doke. Hmm. He was just like, this season, just love on her. Just release her. So I remember talking to her. She was like, babe, that's not necessary. I said, boo, it is. Cause you know my wife, bro, she a trooper, bro. So she like, I know you, you know what I'm saying? I know you got blue balls. Like, I know you struggling. Like, let me help you. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, get you right. right. Like, she she was she's on that. So don't get it twisted. Like, she was just like, you know, I know you got needs. I said, boo, I know I got needs, but my number one need is for you to be good. My number one need is for you to be in a good place, right? So I'm gonna deal with this with God, but don't worry about what I need right now. Your body is failing you, and I can't do nothing with the hormones. I can't do nothing with all your family members dying. I can't do nothing with the depression. I can't do nothing with the fibromyalgia and the endometriosis and the adenomyosis. I can't do nothing with the polyps and the legions. I can't do nothing with that. I was like, all I can do is love you and give you grace and give you some time and let tell you you ain't got to have that type of pressure on you. And so, man, it released her. Bro. My, let me tell you something. You can, my, there is no doubt my, you can't act, my wife don't question if I love her. She don't question my devotion for her because of how I sacrificed. And I don't question her devotion or her love for me because of how she sacrificed. So those, so it was like one week after another, after another, one month after another. And I'll never forget, it was a right around just when we crossed over that nine month mark, I came home and she was like, come upstairs right now. I was like, praise God. Oh, wow. Let's go. Oh, wow. Hulk smash. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll never forget that, bro. And that's when God released us. And I realized a few days later, I was like, man, that nine months, that was symbolic to God birthing something different inside of me mm. and inside of our marriage. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that nine months with no sex, you know, was really hard. But was even harder was just keeping my eyes pure keeping my, my, my body pure. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Cause the, right. the flesh in me, the dude in me was like, bro, just go to go online and squeeze one out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, or I, you see, it's so many, I, bro, I could pull them anywhere, bro. I'd be in the gym in, in, purposely ignoring these, I about to say hoes, women. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'd be purposely like, nah, I'm good. Like I ain't making no eye contact. Like ain't no cute little gesture. Like I don't need that attention. I could pull them anywhere. So the other, my other flex was not just that I went nine months, without that sex, but my other flex was I kept my heart pure, I kept my body pure, there was no masturbation, there was no pornography, there was no side pieces. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And which was one of the hard, not one of, <laughs> that was the hardest thing mm. I've ever done in my life. And people say, how? Like, bro, how did it? Like, they like, bro, do you really go nine months? How? Bro, God. I have, a, I have a whole new understanding to when the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like, but I was getting up at three o'clock in the morning at that time. I remember somebody was like, oh, bro, you trying to be like E.T. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm trying to be like God. Mm. I know I need more of God's spirit, bro, because that monster inside me mm. wants to snap. That monster inside me is like, what about me? And that what about me is real. I got real needs. I got real wants. I got real desires. I've been making good money for a long time now, right? Like, So it's like, that is that, but it's like the ultimate sacrifice. It's like, okay, what do you need? That's one thing, bro, when a king sits back and watch their troops go to battle, but back in the day, like the kings we have a lot of respect for is the kings that's charging in battle on the horse with their troops. Yeah. That's a different type of energy right there. When you ain't got to do that, you could just stay back at the palace, but you're like, no, nah, I'm all in. I'm that type of king, bro. I'm on the front lines when it comes to this thing. And so that was a very painful season. Um, but I grew, you know what I'm saying? And we grew from it. And she needed that, you know what I'm saying? Because I realized like I am a reflection of Christ in my marriage. 
So I need to show her like this is what God look like. This is what Christ feel like. Like he gonna rock with you and he gonna love you regardless and he gonna take care of you regardless of what you do. His word says my mercies are new every morning. So when I wake up in the morning, there ain't nothing we can do regardless of what we do. Nothing can separate us from his love. So I'm like, man, how do I get to a point where in my marriage, nothing can separate uh, Tracy from my love? No matter what she do, no matter what she don't do, nothing is going to separate her from my love. Like, I was like, I got to get to that point. And that nine months bro, brought it out of me. And it was the hardest season of my life, but also the more, re the more rewarding because it made me to be the man I am today. That's amazing. Um, I mean, to even think about that, like you've been in that situation, because a lot of times before it's people painful get, to even think about that. I mean, <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, because a lot of times when people are getting, you know, people getting married, especially men and men's friends, you hear about, oh, wow, you know, you only had this one woman. Oh, how you going? How you going to deal with that? <laughs> Let me talk but about but that. but nobody talks <laughs> yeah. about like, what if your woman gets sick? Yeah. What if she's going through some mental or emotional turmoil? Right. So it just it shows you that it's, it's more things to the relationship than how many people you not gonna be able to have sex and with. And who cheating on who? And who exactly? Because and, and see that's the interesting thing about sacrifice, right? Because when it comes to really sacrificing, the opposite side of sacrifice is very practical, right? Like like you said, it's very practical to go ahead and let. Let let a nut go. Mm -hmm. Like take care of yourself. It's very practical. Your thoughts, your dark thoughts, to talk you into being with another woman because your wife is neglect. You're literally neglected mm -hmm. in your needs. Mm -hmm. So the dark thoughts become very practical and persuasive. Mm -hmm. If somebody called me, one of my closest homies, at two a.m. in the morning, and I got somewhere to be at six, I got something very important to do, and he needs my help. It's very practical to say, bro, I got some, I got some really important to do in the morning. I need these few hours of sleep. Right. But I think that that's one of the more that, that that's what sacrifice is, right? Mm -hmm. It really is is self sacrifice. Like mm -hmm. you take away from you mm -hmm. a part of you to give to someone else, right? And I, 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 I it's, it's really even kind of it's really beautiful hearing it because I, I don't think as a culture we have a very selfish culture, mm -hmm. and a selfish culture yes. is the opposite of sacrifice mm -hmm. because we don't want to take anything from ourselves mm -hmm. for anyone else. Mm -hmm. So even when you hear or see other people sacrificing, that's easy to get triggered. Like just like it's, oh, it's, sure. it's triggering. So that's, it, it's really dope to hear that. But I actually want you to, to uh, answer what Ryan was talking about, because to, to talk to a couple, a, a couple that may be experiencing something like that, right? That's health related, right? That's something that's completely out of your control. It's not that this is a bad person, but they feel neglected just because of mere circumstance in a relationship. How, is it like how do you navigate that season? Is it based on what you've experienced? Yeah, so it you know it depends on. Sometimes it's voluntary, sometimes it's involuntary. Like if you got someone that physically can't do it. Or just won't for whatever reason. I really put that in the same category. And if you marry, it's like, okay, I got to go back to my covenant now. Does this give me a reason, you know what I'm saying, to leave, right? Because you took all these vows. And so that part can be tricky. Shout out to my man, Daryl. I got one of my homies, man. He's a part of our program, a good friend of mine. I'm his mentor, but he don't realize this. But like, bro, he ministers to me. His mm -hmm. wife has some type of like disease where she is like, bound to a wheelchair and she's pretty much paralyzed. Sometimes her face is slumped. He have to like wipe her mouth. He has to wash her. He has to bathe her. He got to do her hair and makeup. Like when you see this, it's just like, yo. And here's the crazy thing. When he went to ask for her hand in marriage, she was perfectly fine. Went to her father and was like, hey, I want to marry your daughter. I love her. He was like, are you sure? He was just like, honey, come in here. His wife come in on the wheelchair. The father was like, it's a chance that my daughter could have this same disease that my wife has. My man was wow. like, my man was like, bro, I'm gonna love her anyway. My man Daryl Thomas was like, bro, I'm gonna love her anyway, even if that has happened. They get married, she's beautiful, light skinned, long wavy hair, healthy, everything great. A few years in, she they see saw small signs. Long story, she gets diagnosed. So now we at our last conference. He wheels her up to the front. I'm just thinking, like, bro, you different. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing her fix her hair. We taking a picture. He fixes her hair. He wipes, you know what I'm saying? Wipes her mouth or whatever. And then she's trying to smile and he's smiling. She's smiling. And I'm just like, wow, the way he reveres his wife. Bro, he a real man, bro. 
He a real powerful man of God. Wow. The way he reveres his wife, the way he loves his wife, the way he takes care of his wife. Bro, his wife can't do nothing for him in return but breathe. But her, her breath alone is enough. And I'm he like, knew. Listen, you a different type, of, huh? He knew going into it bro, that was a chance. Bro, he knew that going into it that this was a chance. You know what I'm saying? Good looking dude in the athletic space, be speaking all over. Like, got a lot of great things going for him. Oh, bro. Bro, man to man, we can sit around this table, we all chop it up and all pull it when they come around, like that type of dude. But he was like, bro, this is what God got me on. So I'm looking at him. People looking at me nine months. I'm like, bro, you talking about nine years? However long y'all been married? And ain't no telling like when God gonna do something miraculous and heal her, which can happen. I'm just like, that's different right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's the type of people I, I, I get my vantage point from. So to everybody out here that's like, well, what if she ain't doing this? Or what if he ain't doing that? If you marry, I, I get it. It's in the, you're in the covenant. But now you letting your character be perfected. Now you letting your character get tested. You know what I'm saying? Like now you in the place, in the position now where you like, hey, do I make some different moves? Do I make some pivots? Like how do I need to grow in my character so that I can be the husband or the wife that she needs me to be, even if they not reciprocating it and showing the same love back? Wow. That's very intense. That's a hell of a story right there. Uh, the yeah. reality of the situation is, I mean, he, he knew from just, you know, getting that from the father and seeing her mother, what kind of condition she was in. But the, I mean, even as the, the average person, you may not, you may not have a family history, but you don't know what might happen to somebody right, right. after, you know, you, you go ahead and get married to them. Facts. So, and I, I guess that's what you kind of marry. You just marry all of the possibilities, all of the possibilities. All the, the possibilities the that could happen. The whole package. Yep. And that's, man, that's deep stuff right there. It I, is. I, I, let me ask you this. Would you say, man, we we just did a fire episode. We just released it with Tim Ross on Lecrae. It is going, it's doing waves. And in that, we talked a lot about like the concept of a real man. Mm -hmm. Like we try, we did our best to demystify that and bring some actual, uh, Tim broke down the ingredients of a man in there, mm -hmm. which I thought was beautiful. And I want to talk to you uh, to, to you about that as well, because, I mean, I would consider you a real man for sure. Mm -hmm. And But the way you talk about your progression, it seems like you definitely had to grow into that man. Mm -hmm. So when you consider what is the difference between a male and a mm -hmm. man, how would you break down the major difference between the two? So an adult male is somebody, you a male? You, you know what I'm saying? You got you got pubic hairs, you're 18. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, you're an adult male now. You're you're a male, man species, and you're an adult. You're 18, 19, and up. A man is somebody that takes care of their business, somebody that handles their business, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that, you know what I'm saying, takes care of themselves, right? So I, I tell folks all the time, like, okay, you call yourself a man, but you live with your mama. No disrespect, man. I, man, you know what I'm saying. It's some, it's some of the community might be upset. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, but if, but if you live at the home right now, now if you chose to, because your, your mom, my mama sick, and I need to take care of my mama, like that's one thing. But it's like, bro, if you if you like depending on your mama to take care of you, you are not a man. You are an adult male, and that's okay. Right? Because that's the season. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going to be there forever. You're going right. to get out your mama basement at some point. You, she like your best friend. She cook all your favorite foods. But wash you still her clothes. Need, she wash her clothes. But you still need your mama to take care of you. You are not a man. You're an adult male. Mm -hmm. But when you get out here and you begin to take care of yourself, okay, that's what, in my opinion, that's what qualifies you to be a man. But when you call yourself like a man of God, when you call yourself like a powerful man, like on that next level, is when you take care of other people. So it's one thing for me to take care of me. But let me tell you something, bro. I don't care. My man could have played in the NFL. My man could have played in the NBA. He could be 6'8", you know what I'm saying, 230 pounds, chiseled, $6.5 million in the bank account. But he's single. You're not on my level. One more time, bro. You could be 6'6", 230 pounds, 7% body fat, chiseled, $6.5 million in the bank account. You ain't on my level, bro, because you ain't taking care of children. You ain't got one wife that you can please over and over again, year after year, and keep chasing her heart. You're not on my level. When you sit back and say, not nah, my will be done, but they will be done. That's a whole other level right there. You were doing great. You are an awesome man. You are handling your business, but you don't get to my level until you're ready to sacrifice. You don't get to my level till you wrestle my devils. And I done fought through two 
two months to keep my family. I don't went through two months to be the man I am today. So I would tell every cat, it's like, bro, you good looking. You got the big beard. You got the car. You got all of that. Okay, great. You not on my level until everything you do is for somebody else. Mm. Until you take care of others. Until all the sacrifices, all the decisions you make is to provide for somebody else. To think about their thoughts. To think about their feelings. Like, that's what puts you on my level. Does that make sense? Listen, that may... It makes the most sense, especially yeah. because I think that's the main thing that men, uh, including myself, can have issue with running away from is that level of responsibility because yeah. that is the next level. And and no disrespect to the cat that's like, bro, what you saying about me? Like, I'm single. I, I'm going to have a family one day, bro. I'm not saying nothing. Like, mm -hmm. bro, you are a powerful man. I will give you that. But you don't get to that next level until you say, like, man, I'm taking care of other people now. Now my life, I'm bearing fruit. To bless other people now like that's a whole nother level right there when you get to a point where you're like yo it ain't about what i want all the moves i make is for my family it's for my children these are the sacrifices i'm making like that's when you become a real powerful man on the next level that's when you like a man of god when you like forget my needs forget what i want forget my desires i'm showing up every single day for you and when you're not able to give me what i need and what i feel like i deserve and i do deserve when you don't treat me like a king but i still treat you like a queen but that's powerful right there. You know what I'm saying? But most people are, it take a while to get to that space. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So shout out to all the cats that are powerful men. They handling their business. But you don't get to that next level and you don't get to my level till you got kids that get excited when you come home, bro. Bro, I come home, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm like Michael Jackson, bro. I'm like Drake when I come in the crib. Daddy, they running to mm -hmm. me. My wife gazing in my eyes, kissing me like, bro, I'm the man in my crib, bro. They, the sacrifices I make, like it's a whole different type of energy. And I feel like you only get to that level when you really sign up and say, okay, I'm about to be a man on that next level. So that level of, because I think a lot of men are just stuck, and men and women, just stuck in this place of selfishness. Where they not really, I mean, you got people posting on social media every day talking about how much of life they're enjoying at 30, 35, 40 years old, being yeah. single without kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, you know, like I said, I think it all goes back to that selfish core. So how do you train yourself to become more selfless? I think, man, and, and so shout out to all the people that's in their 30s and 40s and they don't have families and they don't have children. Like, it's, I don't think it's nothing wrong with that. If you're a woman or a sister and you're 33 or 41 and you're single and you're happy, like, then, like maybe being a wife ain't the ministry for you. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like maybe having children ain't the ministry for you. Brother, you know, they say that 36% of women regret getting married and having children when they did because they realized like yo i just went to college and got a degree and got married and started working and had kids just because i thought i was supposed to mm. but then they realized in year four or five like man i really like could have been single a little bit longer and so i tell folks all the time like yo if you single you ain't got kids like that that it's a badge of honor for me but like that ain't no shot to you like still handle your business and when you're blessed with the opportunity to have a family and have children, go for it. But at some point, it's just like, okay, I'm, put, I'm moving past what I want. I'm moving past what I need. And I'm showing up every single day for them. I hear, But see, I hear consistently the Mad Brothers that come on here, they all distinctly draw a line in the sand of really what it comes down to is like the level of respect they have for the men who are leading ahead in families and the brothers who are single. It's like a distinct difference in what they say how they almost revere mm -hmm. that man and his responsibility and what he's doing. You're talking about the single guys. No, the married brothers. The married brothers. They all are on the same page saying the single brothers are not on our level. Oh, okay, like, okay, I mean, okay. a lot of them will even go as far to say, you're not even a real man until you had a family. We had Rod Gardner come on here, say that right. pissed everybody off. We had we had a couple people. That's my dog. We had a couple yeah. people come come yeah. up on here and say, and about everybody at the table was on the same page with him. Shannon, Crump, everybody was on the same page. So the thing, and that pissed a lot of people off. And see, the thing about it is, I'm curious to know because the first thing I heard a lot of the fellas saying was they would say things like, "But I mean, you know, I could build a charity and take care of people this way. I don't necessarily have to have my own family." and what it really showed me was there's just a lot of fear mm -hmm. associated with men taking on the family responsibility 
Right. Like even the charity looks sexier than the family. And, and taking on a full time woman. <clears throat> and taking on a full time right. woman that you got to commit to. They don't to. understand. That's a whole nother discipline. When it's like now, it's the one thing to have a charity. You ain't got to never see them kids. <laughs> right. Bro, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? All bro, it takes is money. Bro, I, listen. Nice. We got a, we got a foundation in South Africa. We just put twenty more kids from the forty we did two years ago. Our foundation just put twenty more kids through college in South Africa, the college of Cape Town. Bro, I ain't met nan one of them kids. Wow. But it's my foundation. Now, I'll see them in December when we go visit for our, our holiday trip. But, but, but I ain't see them. So, it's yeah. So, again, I feel what Rod's saying. That's my dog. We was together last week. Like, I know Rod is like, you ain't a man. I would just say, look, bro, if you handling your business, you paying your bills, you on your own, you successful. It's like, all right, bro. I, that's like, that is manhood. But that next level, I believe. I wouldn't dare say you just an adult male, even though you got a whole bunch of stuff going for you, but you pay your taxes and you got a 800 credit score and you know what I'm saying? You got all these things. You got a great career life and you give, like, no, you bro, you provide for your community. Like, bro, you a man. You That's dope. But that next level mm. is when you like, yo, it's not about me though. It's about my wife. It's about my children. You know what I'm saying? Like, they are res I'm responsible. That's it right there. I'm responsible for them, bro. I'm responsible wholeheartedly for three people in this world. That's my wife and my two children. They are my responsibility, not my employees, not my team members that work with our company, the 20 different people, not the folks we in South Africa we sponsor. My wife, my son, my daughter, they are my responsibility. So I feel like when you take on responsibility and you got people within your home and it's like you build a legacy, that's a whole nother level. I think that's where I think we was talking about this too. I think that's where the, the midlife crisis comes in for guys. Yeah, that's real. Where it's like they know that it is a next level mm -hmm. and they feel it within their deepest core being that yeah. they need to, even if they got kids, even you know they got my wife hit me with that, right? What, what tell my me? My wife told me I'm in midlife right now. Really? Oh, really? So, what'd she say? So, why'd she say that? She was like, You if I was like, No, I'm not. I was like, Maybe. She and then she read an article. My wife be on them articles, bro. Yeah. And she was just like, um, if if you feel like what you've accomplished isn't good enough, and you and you feel antsy, and you want more, and you're ready for new things, I was just like, dang, she was like sixty percent of boxes I was checking off, and so I am actually in a transitional place now. I don't know if I would call it like midlife crisis, like my life's in a crisis, but I am in midlife. I'm 43 years old. I'm in a transitional place here mm. where I'm even thinking deeper about legacy. My daughter just wrote her first book that we getting published. She got a book signed in a few weeks. Like I'm, I'm thinking so much differently. It's like, okay, we did this. Uh, how do we get to 20 million a year? Like I'm thinking differently. How do we put a hundred kids in college? Like I'm thinking differently. It's like my pops is a pastor. How do I retire him and get him that boat he want so he can fish and you know, like, you know what I'm saying? So my, my thinking now was just differently. So I'm naturally wired to want more. But that midlife like is a thing. And I thought it was just me being driven one and more, but it's like, nah, that, that midlife is a thing. So I'm actually in that process now. And how you navigate that thing. Now I ain't about to go out here and buy some brand new like motorcycle. You know, that's like the, yeah, st yeah. the stereotype. <laughs> the Harley no, that's the, the Harley see, Davis. But see, yeah. you you attacking the crisis the right way. Cause you're trying to find the next step and then you are willing to take responsibility for whatever that next step is. Yeah. It's the guys who get stuck in the crisis that go out and buy the Harley Davidson. They go out and buy the Ferrari. Cause they like, yo, I know I should be aiming at this next level, mm -hmm. but instead of accepting that responsibility, I'm fine with staying where I'm at. In fact, I want to go back and see how it, see how it used to feel. Right. To do all this other stuff, to be the playboy, mm. you know what I mean, to to get the attention. So I do think that we all go to these levels of crisis as we something. mature. Let me show you something. So see this room right here. Wow. I went through. I, I flew my man Ben wow. in from um from Portland, Oregon. Yeah. He does a two day intensive called Life Plans. Wow. I'm on the airplane. I had a speaking engagement. Send that. I want to send, send that picture to to send that picture to Thread because we're gonna post that. Okay. We're gonna put yeah. that send, up. Send it to me. Send it to me. Yeah, yeah send it to Tasha. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. You said you sent. You you said you let flew me him sure, out. Let me make sure they uh, when they zoom in they can't read. <laughs> <laughs> I got my whole, I got my whole life on this board. You feel me? We got the super chats coming in too. Shout out to Anna Dominique. Dominique, we are gonna go over those super chats in just a second. And shout out to Naomi for going ahead and sending over her super chat. As a matter of fact, in a second. After Jeremy breaks this down for us, we're going to open up the phone lines because we about to, you know, go ahead and ask the coach some questions. Yes. Yeah, so y'all get ready to get on these phone lines. All right. I just I just text you 
uh, the picture. So check this out. So you're talking about effective ways of juggling midlife or midlife crisis. Yeah. I'm literally on a plane flying from New York, had a speaking engagement, and I'm literally sitting in first class. Bro, successful, bro. I just got a big bag for pouring my heart out of speaking. But I just felt stuck. I'm just being vulnerable with y'all, right? I Please. Felt, I felt confused. I felt almost unfulfilled. I felt like I was all over the place. And I'm sitting here. She's like, sir, would you like some drink? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I had to apologize. I had like an attitude like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm just thinking like <laughs> I was in a weird place. And my man Ben texted me. I've known Ben for years. He's a coach. He works with high-level executives. He's out in Oregon, minister. Ben yeah. texted me. He's like, hey, I do this thing called Life Plans where it's a two day intensive. We spend six to eight hours together. We map out your story from your beginning to where you are now. And we set up a strategic plan for where God's taking you in your near future. Let me know if it's something you're interested in. I'd be honored to support you in this way. Pride kicks in, Ryan. I'm thinking like, I don't need no night plans, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Seven figures speaking, got programs, traveling the world, books like, why dream home? Like, then God was like, bro, that's cap. Bro, you in a weird place right now. You feel confused. You feel a little unfulfilled. You kind of edgy. Like he was like, God, he was, you was literally just praying, like, man, God, why do I feel this way? So I text Ben back. I was like, tell me more <laughs> before I you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, tell me more. So he was just like, I got this training. I work with high level CEOs, GM, Ford, Macintosh, IBM, all the big dogs. This training has gone through them. And if it's something, bro, I flew my man in. Bro, we spend two days together. Why? Because I'm in midlife. I'm in a transitional place where I'm trying to figure out, like, where do I navigate? And so I share that with y'all and to our audience to let folks know, bro, I ain't got all the answers. Like, yeah, I be praying, praying heavy and hard, watching sermons, growing. But I also got mentors and counselors that can help me navigate this space because I want to win at the highest level. Does that make sense? It does yeah. make sense. Yeah. So and that see, midlife thing is real. That bro. just shows you that even on every level of just being a man that you could run into that place absolutely mm -hmm, of being lost confused because a lot of people would just look at you and be like man you got it all together you got it all figured out you killing it i'm like bro i'm bro i'm just now tasting blood mm. wow. the way i'm wired bro like somebody the other day was like yo man atlanta should give you an award for all the philanthropic work i'm like bro all right so we feed a thousand people per month in south africa 52 weeks in the year so we feed fifty thousand people tony robbins feed 100 million people Wow. Mm. Bro, he human like me, bro. He got balls like me. His breath stink in the morning like me. Like, he a human, regular man like me. So I'm driven by that, bro. So I'm like, yeah, all right, we feed 50,000 people a year, but we can do more. So that's what I'm on, bro. I'm like, I want to do more. When my work on earth is done, I want God to be like, well done, my good and faithful servant. My That dog, my boy went hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Facts. I don't want to be on that. I, I'm, I don't do cruise control, bro. I mash the gas. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm in a weird season now where I'm in transition. And so because I want to live my life that way, I want to put the most good out here. I want to do the most for the most people. Like I want to provide the best for my family. I'm just naturally wired that way, but I still need help. I still have dark moments. But I just realized I was suffering from depression for years. Can we talk about that real quick? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Bro, I, bro, I did not know that, bro. You was on stage motivating folks. Bro, you feel me? Like I was literally having a counseling session and we were talking and I was just thinking like, cause I was, for whatever reason, I thought depression was you crying all day, you can't get out the bed. Yeah. The for real, like I was just like, bro, I'm not depressed. Like I ain't crying. Like I'm handling my business, I'm making moves. But in my heart, it's like my heart wasn't at peace. You know what I'm saying? And I realized like, yo, I've been functioning from a place of depression, a place of being tired, feeling depleted, like going, going, going. Pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, feeling like I wasn't being poured back into. Like I was in a real weird space. And I realized like, yo, there's this thing called functioning um, depressed. And my wife was like, yeah, that's like a thing. And I was like, man, all these years, I just thought I had a weird feeling, but I was really suffering from depression. But I was just wired to see the best in people, to see the best out of life, to not complain, to, to do the best I could. But I realized like I was, there was seasons where I was hurting but I was just, because I'm so optimistic and just so driven to go, it, it didn't really hit me. And I didn't realize like I was in that space, if that makes sense. That makes a lot and of brothers sense. brothers like you, I can imagine it's even hard to read when you in that space hmm. because your aura is going to be bright. You're going to turn it on every time Absolutely. you get around people. Absolutely. So you're not going to even reek 
of depression. Right. It's going to be something real deep and internal within you that only somebody like your your, your wife, right. like the closest person right. to you right. will see. And she got to really even be in tune because I can imagine a brother like you, it's you, you going to, most of them symptoms, you going to bypass. For, oh, that's it right there. It's almost like um, what, what they say with COVID, asymptomatic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you ain't yeah. It's like, nah, nigga, you got COVID. You just got someone else's symptoms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get away from me, bro. Yeah. But like, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So check it out. What I want to do now, let's go ahead and get on these calls now. Lana, pull the number up. We're going to open up we, the phone line. We're going to open I, up the I, phone can line. Can I run the super chat real quick? Yes. Go ahead and run the super chat. Shout out to Anna Dominique. She says, Can Jeremy speak on what backgrounds do men who aren't afraid to commit usually come from? Right now, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, right, so, hold so, <laughs> so, so, no, no. So, what backgrounds do men come from that aren't afraid to that commit? Aren't afraid to commit all of them. It's not like if you get one with a financing background or or get you a Leo get or you're someone Puerto Rican. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they, they, men and they backgrounds come in all different safe society, whether he go to Yale or whether he go to HBCU or whether he a construction worker or whether he a, like, bro, it, it ain't no, it ain't no get you this type of man. You know what I'm saying? He ain't afraid to commit. Like they just, there are men that's not afraid to commit, but then you got to ask yourself like, what are they committing to? Cause watch this. If somebody was like, hey Jay, will you commit to a certain diet? I'm like, nah, I'm good. But they're like, I right, well, would you commit to a certain lifestyle change? Like, I might be interested in that. So it also depends on, like, what are they committing to, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. It's like when people want to book me to speak, it's like if Ebony is just like, okay, Jeremy's 40000 and they're like, for an hour? Yeah. Well, he's out of my budget. It's just like, oh, okay. But then someone else is like, 40000 that's it? I'll right. be thinking, like, <clears throat> price go up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, it right, really right, depends right. on, like, the source and, and how people perceive you in a sense. And what they're willing to pay. Some people are just willing to pay more. Some people say, I don't have that budget. It's like, okay, you do have the budget. You're just not willing to pay that for me. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I've literally had engagement that's like, yeah, I'm not going to swing that for 40 grand. But then you bring a homeboy for 80 grand. And it's like, oh, you didn't have that in the budget for me, but you had it for someone else. Mm. So it's, I think it's interesting if a sister's like, okay, but what if he doesn't want to commit? Okay, but what exactly is he committing to? That's the bigger question, because if you can figure out what he's committing to and what you're bringing to the table, it enhances your chance of finding someone that's going to commit to you. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Jeremy. And it's so funny, man, because I'm learning all these great things from these great men, and I'm coming to all these realizations for myself. And I truly think a man that is willing to commit or has committed to himself is mm -hmm. going to be willing to commit to a long-term relationship mm -hmm. because the more things I'm learning from men like yourself mm -hmm. is marriage, having this covenant, being, you know, honorable to this covenant is going to put you in a situation to become a better man. So if you want to become a better man, you're going to find you a loyal woman, right? You're going to, you're going to steward over a family, have children. You're right. going to take care of what God has blessed you with. So I think if you, if a man is willing to commit to himself and to improving himself over a lifetime, then he'll be willing for a relationship. I think mm -hmm. it's when a man is not so willing to commit to himself. That's what I mean. It's like when you know exactly what you should be doing, mm -hmm. you know this diet is better for you. You know this exercise is better for mm -hmm. you. You know these levels of commitment is better for you, but you stay away from it because you know if you choose it, you're going to be forced to be truly make a bunch of sacrifices. Right. Things that you're really not really right. re ready to give up. So as I'm thinking about that more and more, I'm like, okay, wow. I personally, and I, I think a lot of men in this position, really needs to just go ahead and make that commitment to to bettering themselves. Absolutely. Because if you can't if you can't better yourself, then you can't better nobody else. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and we with marriage, you gotta realize something. We like we are constantly working on ourselves as humans, right? As men, as women, like we're constantly working on ourselves. And so just know that in marriage, there is gonna take some work as you work on your spouse too. So the stronger you are, the more whole you are. Whenever I be having women send me DMs, they might have saw a video when I was with y'all or with Tim, and they're like, Can you pray for me? A a, a man, a, I need a Proverbs 31 type of man, like, cause I'm a Proverbs 31 type of woman. I'm like, okay bet like yeah i'll pray for that i'm like but in the meantime like while god is working on him just make sure you bring in your best to the table make sure you got your health make sure you got your holiness make sure you got your healing make sure you got your stuff together so that when this dream man comes through you would dream white for him 
Mm. So look, I'm ready to get to the call-ins, but can, you got to okay. touch on that because we got, I think one episode is, is like last week, Tyshawn was like, yo, I want all the women, if you want a man of God, drop man of God in the chat. And the chat was going off. Man First of all, we might check the comments God, right God, now, God, and they still type a man of God in the comments right now. <laughs> right, People ain't even watching the live. Man of man God, God, man of God. 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 It's so going crazy. clearly, clearly, right. a man of God right. is on the top list, right. top of the list for what women desire. Right. Right. So right. tell tell us, what is a woman of God? Yeah, the first thing I think about, man, Ooh, she she walks she walks in grace. She ain't, but she ain't yelling. She ain't out here in these streets like that. You know what I'm saying? Like she's not bringing drama. She she's bringing peace. She's bringing tranquility to you. When you got your head down and you feel low, she lifting up your head. She calling you a king, even though you make thirty five thousand dollars a year. Mm. It's a different type of woman right there. When she can speak life to you, when she can pour into you, when she can love you where you are, when she can say, "Baby, you're doing the absolute best you can." Baby, I see you. That's a woman of God. When she can acknowledge your hurt, your pain, your efforts that you're trying, and she uplifts you. A woman of God will uplift you. A woman of God ain't gonna put you down. A woman of God ain't be like, "Nigga, you ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. You lame. You blah blah blah." My girl told me about you. Like that ain't a woman of God. A woman of God walks with grace. A woman of God sees the best in people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if I would give women any advice. If you got, if you blessed to have a man, if you blessed to have someone you spend time with, whether y'all are dating or whether y'all are in a relationship, man, love him. You know what I'm saying? I would tell women, like, cherish him. You know what I'm saying? Like, treat him like the king he's going to be. Re uh, reward the behavior you've been seeing inside of him. Love on him. Speak life to him. Affirm him. Make him feel like the man, especially if he is a man of color and he a minority out here in the world, in a world that already don't value him. In a world that already don't really respect him. Like, he already got to climb up a hill. So when he comes in your presence, when he comes in your home, he, you sh he should feel that love. He should feel that warm embrace. He should feel that tenderness. He should feel that support. He should feel that comfort. He sh you sh it grace is exposed out of your life, out of your body. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what a woman of God looks like. So I will tell all the sisters out there that's like, man, I need some advice on what I should be doing in my relationship. Man, love that man. Cherish that man. Honor that man. Support that man. Speak life to that man. Give grace to that man. Lift that man up. Make that man feel like a king, regardless of how much he's making and what type of lifestyle he's trying to provide for you right now. Treat him as if he's already on that level. Mm. Because when people look at me, it's like, you can't see me and not see my wife. Can I deal with that real quick? Before we get to the questions, bro, I want to just address all the cast. It's like, bro, you do so much for your wife. Bro, you do all this for your wife, bro. You a simp. Boy, I'm, somebody put that on, online the other day. I was, about, so I, I was like, bro, I swear, I'm about to choke you out, bro. Like, you sitting here calling me. Like, bro, you have no clue. So to everybody that's wondering, to everybody that's wondering, like, okay, Jeremy, you serve your wife. You went through this fast for your wife. You you do all this to protect your wife, and you chase her heart, and you washing dishes, and you vacuuming, and you getting her car detailed, and you taking her on exotic trips, and you making fresh bouquet of flowers every single week. Like, like, like what, what, what did your wife do for you? That's like, first off, to the little boy, only your little boy will ask that question. A real man is like, that's what's up. A real man is like, because that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what a real man, a little boy would be like, but what she do for you if you're doing all that? Well, let me tell you what she did for me. For one, when I first met her, I didn't even know how to put together a resume. She helped me get my first legit job, bro. So that's what she did for me. You know what I'm saying? Then when we started businesses, she quit her job when I quit my job. She could have kept working for the government. She walked away from a great health care salary benefit. She gave me two children. You know what I'm saying? She's managing millions of dollars, bro. I ain't got to worry about where our money is going. Like, what has she done for me? Bro, I seen them put that eight-inch needle in her back, that epidural, bro. I seen a pain and agony on my wife's face that she went through for me. Cats talking about what, what your wife do for you. You do all this for her? Like, bro, she's done more for me than I can do for her. I ain't give her no kids. I planted the seed. They forget she about gave, that. She gave birth to my children. She gave birth to my business, bro. She gave birth to my dreams. She could have been like entrepreneur, a speaker. All right, best of luck, baby. I will pray for you. She was like, "Bump that." <laughs> this is what God calling you to do. I'm gonna quit my job too, dog. On it. So when people see me, you can't see me and not see Tracy. And so everybody's wondering, like, bro, you you love your wife, you honor your wife. What does she do for you, bro? She's done everything for me. You know what I'm saying? And I owe her the world and back. Can we forget how to, it's just, fellas just forget about the babies. It's just Bruh. like a woman sacrifices her entire being Bruh. to have a baby. Yeah. Health, knowing the depression is more than likely to come, right? Bruh. Knowing the body, the, the body, what happens it's to changing. the body, what happens to how they feel about themselves. And then you got to try to get your body back right. while you nourishing or feeding the child. Bro, look, bro. 
But that's and that's just one of the many things just my wife one. has done. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, she has literally been the head of helping me with all my companies and all my businesses all these years. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for her. So that's why I was like, yeah, though she's caused me the much pain, the most pain, she has also, you know what I'm saying, brought me the most gain. And I am where I am because of her. So to all the cats that's wondering that, yeah, that's what There you go. You have been acknowledged, all right? That's what they wanted. They wanted some attention, Dave. <laughs> you gave it to them. Lana, pull the number up yeah, right tell now. Tell the fellas to drop woman of God in the chat Here, right here's now. What I want, <laughs> here's what I want y'all to do right now. All right, I want y'all to go ahead and call up here. I want you to go ahead and give me your name, your location, and you got to ask me a question. All right, I want my ladies here who are dating with intention, who got problems or questions relating to ladies the dating. Ladies and men. Oh my gosh, please, let's, let us get a brother on here. We ain't got a brother on here in a minute. Right. I want questions, y'all. Bring the questions. Not the comments, not the stories, not, you know, you know how y'all get on do here. a little bit different because a lot of y'all giving us fake names anyway, so do a little bit different. Give okay. us your age and your location. Age and location, because I want I want to get an audience a good idea of exactly who we're speaking to. We got a call in coming ASL, in here. Age, Let's sex, go ahead location. and put the we'll headphones on AOL. here. So, Lano, you can go ahead and put the headphones uh, volume up. Shout to, out to, to Mir J76. Lano. Hey, y'all, hit the like button. I agree with you, Mir. Hit the like button, guys. All right. Yo, welcome to Harley Initiated. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. We're getting the phones answered. Turn this up a little bit, Lano. Yeah, turn the headphone volume up a little bit. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Welcome, Christopher. Welcome, welcome. When you and join the family, love to see the brothers join. Christopher Newby, welcome to the family. What a perfect last name, Newby. <laughs> you, you, got, you got your white badge, sir. You got your white badge. Time yes. to work, work, work up to the black belt. Brothers up here right now, 922 getting initiated. That's what it is. Over 800 people in the room right now. What we got? Over 800 people in the room. We got somebody on the line here. Go ahead. You, yeah, yes, listen, you what, are what, on. Welcome to the show. Give us, your, give us your ASL, age, sex, location, and hit us with your question. Yeah, so so I'll yeah, no, nah, so I'll say this in short. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for your question. So, you know, I think you can kind of see patterns. You're like when people show you who they are, believe them. You know what I'm saying? So if you see, if you see a man that says he's interested, but he really not handling his business, he really not doing his thing, he really not showing up for you, then he are probably gonna have commitment issues. I I literally know somebody that's been that's been dating somebody for like nine years this is like bruh y'all ain't y'all ain't got married yet you know actually like 11 years i'm like y'all been dating for and living together for 11 years and y'all got married like that's a sign my man got commitment issues every holiday every thanksgiving every christmas she wanted is he gonna pop the question is he gonna surprise me and he's just sitting there eating pumpkin pie sweet potato pie having a good old time it's like yo at some point you got to get to a point where you're like you know what i see you having commitment issues like if you look up here's a chart. If they if every three months or every six months they got a new job, if they can't keep a job, you know what I'm saying? They can't pay their bills on time. You know what I'm saying? They can't they can't keep up their credit. You know what I'm saying? Like they can't keep their promises with you. And my man is always late. I'm gonna pick you up at six. And he always, it's like he's showing characteristics of who he is. And so those are the type of people that I would be cautious of, you know, how you rock with them, just depending on the energy that you're getting back from them. That makes sense. Um, possibly, but I know some stellar and amazing husbands who don't have fathers at home because sometimes the absence of a father makes a man step up to, cause they, now they like, Hey, I know what kind of dad I don't want to be. One of my homeboys is a phenomenal dad, but he's a, he's the opposite of his father. His father was abusive and his father was a drunk. So for him, he's like, I know what I don't want to do. And so I would definitely say, you know, even though they might not have had a father in their life, that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have what it takes to be a good husband or a good father. Hey, thank you so much for that question on here. We're going to let you go ahead. Go, J.A. 
great answers on that one. For those of you who were not able to actually hear the question, shout out to uh, Anna Dominique. Anna Dominique. That was the same person that put the super chat in. She wanted to know. She came with the follow up. Shout out to Anna. Yeah, yeah. She said, y'all didn't get it in the super chat. Y'all about to get it on this phone call right here. And y'all, let me know if y'all can hear the sound. We got a new caller on here. Let me know if y'all can hear the sound. Make sure we got it. If not, I'll just repeat the question to everybody. Give us your age, sex, and location. We, we sure can hear can. you. What's up? Okay, okay. What, what's up? What's your question? All right, so the question is, what is the best way to help a man that's going through a crisis? Should you leave him alone or help him out? Let's get some context real quick. What's your relationship with this man? Very, wait, wait. They can't hear the sound, so let's just be very brief. They can't hear the sound on this one here. So unfortunately, I, I'm not going to let you go about giving that because we got to actually take care of the sound. We're going to just, uh, your question right there, I, I want J.A. to just take it right from where you at right now. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and so, take it so, there. So, so, so great question. Thanks for calling in. So to everybody that's like, hey, I have somebody, uh, say a husband or a boyfriend, I'm sure he's a husband, right? And he's like, you going through, he going through midlife crisis, depends on his person. Okay, okay, husband. So depending on his personality, if he's the like the very, very prideful type, you, you might want to find a very gentle way of bringing it up to him. Like when my wife came to me, she's like, babe, you know, you might be suffering uh, from midlife and I was like nah and then she was like well I read this article I was thinking about you and I noticed you're in a in a transitional space so I would say to let him know it's natural let him know that every single man goes through it let him know that this is literally like a teenager going through puberty mm. it's literally like that like he's like hey everybody goes through it whether it's midlife midlife transition or midlife crisis just hey babe I see you I think the most powerful thing you can do sis is to say, hey, honey, I see you. And I know you're in a weird space. I know you're figuring some things out. If he's like, ah, I'm not really sure. Let me tell you something. Whenever my wife hit me with something I'm not sure about it, I'm like, nah, that's cap. I ain't the case. She whip out an article. I'll be like, dang, you got me. I'm like, you know what you write. <laughs> so you might, you might provide an article and say, babe, it's okay. I'm here to support you. Let me know how to support you. I would just, just say hit him with that nurturing energy um, and then see where it goes from there. You know what I'm saying? But definitely don't make him feel like he got a disease or he's weird or he's weak. Just say, hey, everybody goes through it. Women go through menopause. You know what I'm saying? Men go through midlife crisis. Sometimes women go through midlife crisis. Like everybody goes through it. And I see you in this space and just let me know how I can support you. He might say, I have no clue. And that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, so the relationship, so you've been in a relationship for 26 years. Married for 18. Married for 18. Separated the past four years. Mm-hmm. And he's and he's not he's not responsive. Okay, got you. Yeah, so you're right. That is a wrench. So she was basically saying. You know, she's tried, she's tried to communicate. She's been doing the work of herself, but he's really not responsive. So, you know, what they say, you lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? So I'm not telling you to give up. I'm not telling you to throw in your towel, right? But I am letting you know, like, you know, if it's one of the things y'all been together for 26 years, married for 18, separated for the last four, and he's just not responsive, then he wouldn't even be in a position to even receive that message. I would still reach out to him. Um, but but they also say, and I'm going to tell you this too, sis, before we go to the next caller, they also say that midlife is one of the biggest reasons that a lot of relationships go to divorce around their, their 40s because men and women both are in that weird space where it's like they're looking for something more. So just, you know, take that into consideration. And um, man, I pray that things work out for you. Thank you so much for calling up. <clears throat> hey. Yes, you have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. And y'all, listen. Yes, yes, yes. And y'all, listen. We're trying to work out the sound. I know y'all can't hear the sound, so we're taking care of it on the background. So we're going to actually go ahead and get this worked out before we actually 
go about getting the next caller on. We're gonna go ahead and get that taken care of. But I want I want to ask you this. Type their questions in or no? No, no, no. We do we do have super chats where people send okay, in questions you. that way as well. We can do that later. But we're gonna go ahead and get that. We're gonna get, go ahead and get that taken care of first. The first thing I want to ask you though, Ja, because I, I think it's really important because I, I, I prepared you know some some new questions actually. Okay, let's go for you here, and I, I wanted to ask you this. I think this is a really good con. This is gonna give, give me some good context. I always like to know the extremes of things. Mm -hmm. The extremes of things. What would you say is the biggest mistake you've made in marriage? The biggest, um, the biggest mistake I've made in my marriage, um, I would probably say would be, you know, there was a season where I wasn't really seeing my wife. You know what I'm saying? I remember we were having a marriage counseling session and she told me something that was deep. She said, baby, I'm, she was like, I'm 10 years tired. I said, what does that mean? 10 years tired. She's like, I'm 10 years tired. She's like, I've been tired for 10 years. She's like, it's always another company. It's always another investment. You know, we started a trucking company, bro. So we buying all these 18 wheelers. Like, she's like, it's always another company. It's always another foundation. It's always another program. Like, it's always another, like, it's always something. And yes, it's generating revenue. She's like, I'm tired. This is where I feel my wife. I would go to my wife and I would say, hey, babe, I got this business venture, this idea. If we invest 150,000, boom, 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 boom. This could be the return. Do you think this makes sense? My wife will say, yes, it makes sense. I'd be like, okay, bet, let's do it. But I never asked her, do you got the bandwidth right now? Mm. I never asked her, are you in a good <clears throat> emotional space right now? I never asked her, like, is this the right time for it? This is, this is going to generate massive revenue for our family, but is this the best time? Should we table this for the second quarter or for next year? I never asked that. So all these years, and here's the crazy thing. I was patting myself on the back because I'm like, bro, I'm a dope husband. I'm making all my, I don't make no moves without my girl. I would pride myself on that. Like I run all my plays by my girl because I run, I give her some plays. She like, no, nah, I don't really see it. I'm like, all right, that's probably God trying to protect us. We not on the same page. We don't do it. And so I failed her because I will go to her and ask her, do you think this makes sense? And she said, she would say yes. And I'd be like, okay, bet that's what we're going to do. But I never had the respect for her. To say, now, babe, you're the one that's going to have to set up the bank account. You're the one going to do the EIN number. You're the one that's going to have to do the taxes. Like, you're the one that's going to do the backlog. Like, you're the one that's going to set up the SOPs and the, and the you know what I'm saying, the, the, the KPIs, key performance integration. Like, you're the one that's going to fit through the business. Like, I'm the face of it. I'm the brand. I don't put the bread up. I never said, do you have the time, the mental space, the bandwidth? Are you in a good space? Is this the right? I never said that. So that's one of the biggest mistakes I made mm. to where it's like I look up and you, you attain all the success, all this wealth, all these companies. But then it's like your your girl is a shell of herself. So I was really struggling with some guilt. Like, man, I've been proud of myself as being this husband that's washing dishes, that's vacuuming, getting her car detail, like all these dope things. But I didn't have enough mindset to say, hey, babe, this is a dope idea. You agree with me? Yes. It generates money? Yes. Bet, let's do it. I never said, is this the right time? Are, are you ready to take on this next challenge? And so that's the probably the biggest way that I have failed my wife. It's like I saw her enough to ask her, do you think this makes sense? This is going to secure the bag and put our family in a better position? Yes. But never was just like, okay, but how about your heart? It's just the right time for it. And so I learned. So now I'm hitting her like, hey, boom, boom, boom. You think this makes sense? I'm like, I'm like, she like, yeah. I'm like, but should we do it now or wait? And she's like, you know what? I think it's a good time. Or she'll say, you know what? Let's tackle that in 24. I'm like, all right, bet. We'll do it next year. Mm. And I keep it moving. Interesting. So that was a when she said 10 years tired, did she literally mean that it was a 10 year period? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Cause you know, we, so when we first got married, like we was married for maybe two years before I quit my job and became a full-time speaker. My wife had a super dope government job working for the, um, Jacobs ESTS, like defense contractor. So mm. she was making great money herself, healthcare benefits, retirement plan, all of that. So my girl sacrificed that and was like, yo, if you quit your job to go all in, I'm gonna quit my job and support you. So that like, so we was like all in together, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And so to see her now, what was your question? Like, to, did she have a 10 year period? Yeah. So, so all these years, like we've been working, we've been grinding. And so see them way I'm wired, bro. I've been doing things quick. I do things fast and I try to be as efficient as possible. But, I, but my wife is just like, nope, let me get this project. Okay. This is up and running. It's smooth. It's optimized. Okay, great. What's next? I'm like, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. And then we're going to run it back and do this. And then we're going to X this, 10X. 
And so it was just a lot I was putting on her and she don't move like that. And so if I was really, really in tune with her, I would have been like, hey, boo. Because my thing was like, do you got faith? Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right, bet. Let's do it. But I never said, do you have the time? Do you got the bandwidth? Are you in a good space right now? Or should we wait to do this a little later? But as a man, should you slow down like your speed or like as like you stay in the household of growth, you know, the wealth that you want to create for your family? Would you have like said, nah, we're not going to do these things? Or would you have put things in place to give her some cushion so she may not have had to like heavy the load in certain parts or seasons in that period? Um, you know, both, you know what I'm saying? Like we got, we got a, we got a, like a housekeeper. So takes care of the kids, takes them to school, cleans up around the house, like cook, like, you know, we got accountants, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot. So my wife has a lot of support, but it's still also my position to say, yeah, I want to drive revenue. Yes. I steer the ship. This division God gave me, but that don't necessarily mean it's that time. And if my, if I really view my wife as my partner, if I really view my wife as my partner in this thing and not just some side piece business partner, but it's like, yo, if, if we really doing life together, then I want to run all my plays. But I don't want to make no moves without you. So if you're not in a good space to oversee this, then I'm going to wait until you're in a good space to oversee this. Because what I'm not going to do is do something to drive more revenue, but it drive your heart in the ground. Mm, and put a strain you on know the relationship. What? You know yeah. what? Let, let me ask you this because... I remember it was another brother that me and um, Ryan knew very well. I'm not going to say his name in this story, but he had a, he has a very well-to-do wife mm -hmm. and he's also very well-to-do. And me and Ryan had our real estate company. He was actually our mentor when we was coming into the game. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about whether or not him and his wife are in their completely different businesses. She's like partner at a firm, big mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And he's got a big time real estate company and their businesses are completely separate. They're not joined together. They don't really share major a, a ton of decision making in each other's businesses, mm -hmm. but obviously they help in the load and they help each other out. They do live together, everything, the, the whole nine. And I remember asking, I said, yo, so, you know, how do you guys make financial decisions? Like, does, you know, are you, do you guys have joint accounts? Does she, does, you know, she see what, you know, your, what money moves you making and so on and so forth. And he was like, he said it like, hell no. Yeah. Like he was like, it was staunch. It was like, no, absolutely no, not. absolutely not. My wife does not know how much money I'm making. She don't know where the, the money I'm moving. And she said, I like it like that because I don't want her all in my business. Right. Mm. So it's funny you saying, I want to do business with you. And he's like, I don't want her all in my business. Is it, mm. what would you conclude about a brother that doesn't want his wife involved in his in his paper, like in his finances, in his business, would you say, c c c is there any way that that could be healthy? You know, I don't know the dynamics of their relationship. Until, in all fairness, for him, these are two different companies. So that's almost like IBM and Microsoft. You don't know how much money Microsoft making. Microsoft don't know how much money IBM is making. Like, that's okay. The weird thing is that y'all are a couple. But if his posture was like, hell no, nah, I don't want her in my business, like that's a problem. Now, if he was like, no, nah, she doesn't know how much I make, but I don't mind sharing with her. Hey, last year we did 3.6 in revenue, you know what I'm saying, in gross. And after we paid tax, boom, 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 we actually brought in 1.8. Like if he's, if he don't mind, but if he like, no, nah, it's private, because I don't know how much you making. And then I don't want you in my business. And now I'm in yours. Like you do your thing, I do mine. That's the interesting thing. I don't see a world in my home if my wife was like, I'm about to start a cosmetology company or I'm about to start a, a, a whatever, you know, it's in, a, 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 um, in some other type of company. I, I don't I don't see any world where I'm going to be like, babe, what kind of numbers you doing? Don't worry about my business. I love you. We're going to do date night. We're going to do Aruba. But darling, don't worry about my numbers. I just don't <laughs> see no world where me and my girl will vibe like that. She's but not every, fully integrated. Yeah, but everybody is different. But she don't she wouldn't have to be. But it's like but it's almost like, why are you keeping this from your wife? What what you think she gonna do if you if she find out how much you making, <laughs> or is it something that you upset that she making more than you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's a very interesting dynamic. But I I'm gonna just say it like that because I don't you know I don't know this situation. No 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 I get I get it I get I want you I want you to assume. Yeah. I give you just enough for you to assume. Yeah. And draw conclusions. I just don't see no world where if I got a business, my wife got a business, and then we keep in secrets of how much money we making. You know what I'm saying? Like our, our accounts, like we got. Joint accounts and separate accounts. And this probably gonna have the people in the chat going crazy. But my wife got access 
to all of my accounts and all my business accounts, but her personal accounts I don't have access to. Mm. Wow. But I'm not tripping though. Why, yeah. why, why, but, but is that, was that like a, was that intentional or I just, you just if don't I, even care? If I ask my wife, I say, hey, babe, I want to be able to access all your bank accounts. She'd be like, okay, that's weird. But she would give it to me. But I'm not interested. It's like whatever bridge, it ain't like you make it on the side. Like I know where all the money is going and flowing anyway. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like I trust her with my life. I trust her with the money. Like I couldn't even tell you, I, I can spell taxes, but that's all that when it comes to taxes, I know how to do like, she handles everything else, you know what I'm saying? So there is a level of vulnerability and transparency and intimacy, you know what I'm saying, in our relationship to where I don't, like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I trust her and I know that she's way better with money than me, you know what I'm saying? And so she has access to our business account and my personal account. But if she got like two side accounts of, for, you know what I'm saying, for whatever, like, I don't have access to that and I don't want access to it. Mm. It's like, boo, do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I ain't that governing husband. Like, you just bought that Chanel bag. What account did that 4500 come from? Bro, I'm not on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we blessed. And I trust you. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't be here without you. And I, I, I don't even question if she's doing something weird with the bread. But that's a dynamic relationship we have. Some people might be like, bro, you can't. Well, you, can you, you can't even trust your wife. Mm-hmm. If she go out with her girls to the club or you on Instagram on her friend's page on the story <laughs> to see if maybe somebody talking to your wife. So miss me with that. You know right, what I'm saying? Because right. you can't trust her to go out with her girlfriends. So I know you ain't going to trust her with a little 1500 in your account. Damn. Anyway. Yeah, shots why? It could be 15. <laughs> it could be 1.5. <laughs> hey, here's what I want y'all to do too because J.A. was clear. Because we passed this bedtime, we got two hours with this brother. So y'all better we send got about these, 19, 18 minutes Y'all left. better send these super chats. Y'all better send these super chats now because the yeah, sound, we're going to have the sound working yes. next week. But I need y'all to send them super chats in if y'all want to ask some questions. But go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, we need to get the sound working ASAP because, guys, I don't know if Tyshawn even mentioned this. We are launching a new segment. So we're got the we we're going to brand the call-in segment as the Initiation Hotline. We got the new segment. The goal is to drop it this Wednesday, which we're actually going to be doing live dating on air. We got two people. We're going to try to find a perfect match. We're going to try to find a perfect right. match this Wednesday, In y'all. the middle of the episode, we are going to be doing about 10 minutes. I think we'll be doing like 10 minutes per round live actual dating. It's called Hardly in Love. And it makes sense because, <laughs> and it makes sense because listen, y'all, we having, we have Coach King Canyon come up in here. Y'all know he wanted to, the, the bet my favorite dating coaches in the game, relationship love coaches in the game. So he's gonna be here and we're gonna moderate this together. It's gonna be a great time. So we're gonna get that taken care of. Don't worry. But make sure y'all drop those super chats and in so we can listen, ask any questions before we get up out of here. Shanae Randall sent one over. She said, This is for the sound system. Look, Shanae, we we dropping the ball with the call in today. <laughs> we're gonna take care of you. Shout out to Christine Foster and Baby Cake Boom for joining the YouTube membership. And guys, everybody, listen. The, the cash apps and the PayPals went crazy last Wednesday. They continue to flood in over the weekend. I'm looking at this. I didn't even tell Ty. I don't even think Ty Sean. I didn't even tell him yet. Somebody just sent us. Nikisha Moody just sent us over $408 wow. via cash app. Hmm. That's a blessing. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Shout out to Yvonne Sweet who just sent over a cash app. And shout out to the LOL Plus 4. Who sent this over a PayPal? So, guys, thank you so much for supporting mm-hmm. the channel. It goes a long way. It helps us get new equipment. Helps us get better branding. Helps us get better editing. I know y'all seen the new edits on that Tim Ross Lecrae video. We we putting all of this to use, giving it back to the community, guys. So, what else I wanted to talk about? I think I was missing something. Um, oh, I want to ask Jeremy this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's been a debate uh, amongst Tyshawn and and really just some of the friends we have. We just mm-hmm. very curious, you know. What's more challenging? Is it being faithful or being a player? <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, so just for context, would you have considered yourself prior to marriage? Would you would you live in a player lifestyle? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was you know, I was moving work and you know, we was running two nightclubs. So and even before that, you know what I'm saying? You know, I had quite a few different friends that I would fellowship with. You know what I'm saying? And okay. So um, I would say that. Um, now, the difference, though, is maybe when you use the term player, I didn't make them feel like they was all exclusive, though. So that's the difference. So I wasn't out here breaking hearts. I didn't have six of them on the side, and they thought they was the only one. They knew it. I just 
I got him for this Wednesday, and they they value that time we had together. That makes sense. We talked about that on the other that we I think we called that the noble hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we called it on the episode the with Tim Ross. Hole. Yeah, he was the yeah. he, he was the he was the noble the the noble. He was he was yeah. keeping it real and honest about yeah. what he was. And I'm not saying I had six and ones. I was giving an <laughs> yeah. example. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but what's but what's harder to be a player or to keep? One wife happy? Yeah. Oh, definitely keep one wife happy. I can see that. Bro, let me tell you something, bro. Like, being a player, you got to just have some game, bro. Like, it ain't really that deep. You got to just be able to lie real good. You know what I'm saying? Or just not be available. You know what I'm saying? Or be cut (laughs) off. You know what I'm saying? But to, like, to give one woman your heart and and to keep serving her and keep seeking her and then keep pleasing her, like, it's one thing for you to get a wife, but can you keep her? Oof. Like, okay, bro, you got her. Can you keep her, though? Okay, bro, you got drafted to the league, but now are you going to get injured? Or is it like NFL, uh, not for long, in two seasons and you out? It's like, okay, you got her, but can you keep her? Can you continue to please her? Can you continue to turn her on? Can you continue to have her thing get that thing moist and wet for you? You know what I'm saying? Like, can you continue to keep yourself up? Like, that's the harder part. It's easy to have a whole bunch of little you know what I'm saying, side pieces that you can kind of flip back and forth with Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to go between these three. But it's a whole lot harder to say, I'm going to commit my life. I'm going to commit my heart. I'm going to commit my body to one person and be faithful with this person and continue to seek their heart and continue to serve them at the highest level, regardless of what they do for me. That's a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? A player ain't got no, ain't, ain't no, and let me tell you something. A player can, when it comes to strength, when it comes to powerfulness, when it comes to discipline, somebody that's out here playing can't hold a candle, a light, a cup of water to a real husband, a real man of God that's handling their business. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's All way right. easier. And that's some little boy stuff. You know, you be a player, you're doing your thing, you're having fun, but at some point you're going to mature. Even for me, bro, when I was out doing my thing, when my wife came along, what was what attracted me to her was that she wasn't all up in my grill. She wasn't all like, I'm happy to be up in the crib. When she first came over to watch a movie, I told y'all, she sat on the couch on the far right. She was like, I'm, I'm like, girls, come sit right here. That was my trap. I had a nice couch, big screen TV. She's like, nah, bro, I can see the TV just fine over here. I was like, ooh, okay, she got worse. She know what her value is, like, she ain't quick to jump in my bed. I was like, yo, that's why that's wifey material. Cause all the baddies that came through and I smashed, I was like, man, that was, we had an amazing time. I just <laughs> don't see you have the qualities to raise my daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. and so that's the that's the difference there. It's mm. like uh, it reminds me of like the NFL, you know, because they got the open and drive. The open and drive is very scripted. <laughs> you know, a lot of coaches can coach the open and drive because you don't got to make no adjustments. It's just like you come in with your 10 to 15 plays, right. you run those no matter what. It's typically going to get you the result that you're looking for. Right. But after the game, you're doing the game or at halftime, you got to make these mm-hmm. adjustments based on your personnel, based on what's happening, based on the momentum of the game. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's husbandry. Yeah. So that is the next level because being a player, you can once you got your little script, your little two, three-day script, that's all you need. And then, but it might be some guys, Ryan, that's like, hey, but what if you have seven to eight? What if you got one for every day of the week? It's right. like, okay, but what if you got one wife and four kids? It's a whole other level you on. That takes a whole lot more to be present for your children and for your spouse while you still take care of your job and your career. And you come home to only that family every single day. Like, bro, it takes way more um, strength and power and discipline to be faithful than it does to be a player. Two, it's two separate skill sets and i know this on the lowest level because i remember when i was in college i was running i was running rampant <laughs> in college i remember and i i i I've almost damn near vowed to because i had a girlfriend all through high school and I, I felt like i after it ended right at the right over the summer going in i said you know what i feel like i missed a lot of experiences this and that mm. i said when i go to college mm. i'm not having none of that i'm gonna live this thing to the fullest mm. and i did and at the end of my experience i felt pretty bad about kind of how I handled some of them situations because I did not, I wasn't really doing it in the most honest way I probably could have should right, have. Right. So it was this one young lady, I felt like she was a, a pretty solid young lady, had mm-hmm. good two-parent household. She was, you know, she kind of played it easy on me at the top of the relationship mm-hmm. too. I said, you know, I'm not going to do her like this. Mm-hmm. I just made it my girlfriend. I just kind of made it my girlfriend. We <laughs> liked each other, made it my girlfriend, right? I said, I'm, I'm going to be good at this one. <laughs> and it was just crazy to me because in, in, when you on the player side of it, you always looking for leverage in a relationship. 
Mm. Like you always want to make sure they almost like you more than you like them. Oh yeah. Like mm. they're they're always more invested in you than you are invested in them. Mm. That's kind of what it that's kind of just what comes with it, right? Mm-hmm. But the tables had turned. I'm in this relationship now. I'm with this young lady and things are not going well. And I I realized I did not know what to do. I'm like, wow, my first thought typically is to just go get another woman. Mm -hmm. But now I got to figure out, and I wasn't skilled in none of this. I'm talking Mm. about, I'm still wet behind my ears. I don't know conflict resolution. I don't know vulnerability. I don't know how to, how to have a real adult conversation and still maintain my frame and as a man and not feel weak in, in those moments. And you know, leadership at the highest level. I didn't know none of, none of that. So I realized that I really sucked mm-hmm. as, as a man in that relationship. And in many ways, I, I drove it to the ground. I still don't think she was the, the, the right young lady for me as I, as I look back in hindsight. But if I was, what I do know about men who are the best men, it's more women who are qualified to be their wives. And when I say that, I mean... They have the ability to cultivate more. You know what I'm saying? Like a man who's skilled in communication, in leadership, he's got he's got protection and, and resources to pull a woman into. He knows how to do <laughs> things and move around a certain way. It's he has a higher likelihood to have success with a with, with, with just one woman. With one woman in general, right? Versus a man who doesn't have those skill sets. And none of those skill sets. So you said that, you're saying a that a player that's used to juggling a three or four actually has what it takes. No, like the fundamental. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. I was I was a very great player, right? But I sucked as a boyfriend on a okay, maintaining got you, got you. part. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I got because you. it was to, it's two totally different absolutely, mindsets, absolutely skill sets, absolutely, and everything else. And honestly, it was very frustrating to me in a relationship. Because I couldn't resort to what I was used to resorting to. Right. So I even had developed bad habits right. no, as sure. a player. Yeah, for sure. As it comes to actually having a relationship. Because you can't bring those same values and those same habits into a relationship. Mm-hmm. So now, all that you've learned, you really don't know really how to apply it in this relationship. Not the same. Mm-hmm. It's not very transferable. Right. So that's when I had to go into a different re- re- like realm of study. Right. Right. And understanding that it's really different skill sets you need to actually maintain a long, healthy relationship. And it's yeah. not, I 100% could see. Yeah, First of all, that's sure. why we started this podcast, though, so we could figure out. Yeah, Facts. So we could figure out the, main, the maintenance part. Yeah. I got a, uh, <laughs> listen, I got a super chat that just came in. We got about seven minutes with J.A. I got um, Xanadu, the spirit. She says, <laughs> she's she taking shots already. Y'all talk a lot about staying no matter what. All right, J.A., no matter what. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that sounds like we need to brace ourselves for this ride. So my question is, do men measure love based on how much abuse a woman can take? That's a that's a loaded, loaded I question. No, loaded that's question. Such a setup. <laughs> loaded so, abuse. So, so because it's it almost sounds like. The, uh, do men gaze? I don't think nobody should be looking at. She really loved me because, uh, uh, because I, because I'm putting her through all this and she's still here. That ain't. I don't think that's a way of of gauging. Now some men do look at it like that. Well, you know, because she called me cheating a couple times, she still stayed down. You know, I went, to, I got locked up for a bit, she still stayed down. Yeah. You know, I left the fam and came back, she still stayed down. So now I'm going to go ahead and commit that, to her. That could be for a number of different things. That could just be for somebody that don't want to start over. That mm. could be somebody that has kids with you. That could be for somebody that don't realize they could do better for themselves. And so they feel like all I'm worth is somebody that just keep cheating on me. And mm. if I can just have him a little bit, that's better than having him none. You know what I'm saying? Like that don't really come from a healthy place. And so I don't really know how to answer. That was like really three questions in one. But this idea that do men gauge love by how much abuse? Let me tell you mm-hmm. something, sis. If you're going through emotional abuse, if you're going through physical abuse, like then that's a problem. Then that's not the relationship for you. You should be in a relationship that's constantly weighing on your mental health and, and you deteriorating on the inside. And so if you're not married, you know what I'm saying, you're going through it, then don't sit back and say, okay, you know what I'm saying, he... I, I'm proving my love to him because I stayed in it through all of this. Like that ain't God's, 
will for you. You know what I'm saying? So I would tell them to be cautious of that for sure. First of all, when I hear that, I just think you probably done been through some things. Like even questions, like certain questions, the way they framed. It's just loaded. The way they framed is framed from a position of. Some hurt I've either, Yeah, I've, I've either experienced some hurt with men or seen hurt yeah, yeah, yeah. amongst men. That, that, that's, that's really what I feel. And, and I hope that I'm, I hope I'm assuming here and I hope I'm reaching here in this one. But please don't bring that energy into a relationship with a man, especially when you're dating, because I know instantly when I'm dating young ladies, the ones who've been through that pain, that trauma, and they bringing it right over into the relationship, they almost kind of have this kind of side eye from mm -hmm. the get go, just because they done been through so much. That's one of the most unattractive things that you can do Yeah, is bring that to the relationship. But just in general, what I want to say here, y'all, we still in here rocking heavy. Y'all better go ahead and send it in because we about to actually close this thing down. What I want to do, though, is I want to ask everybody in here. 800 in the room. Before we get up out of here, just please bless us, y'all. Please bless us with 100 likes before we get up out of here. Let's get to 600. Close your chats on your phone. Get us to 600 real quick. And I want y'all to know, I, look, we really want to grow this family. Shout out to every initiate that's a part of this membership. We're going to get y'all taken care of. We're going to do something special for y'all on Thursday still. So we will send that out to the community. We're going to send the link out to the community. So y'all going to see it on the YouTube just for the members, a special special section for the members. You'll see it. We'll drop the link in there. So just hold tight for us. But please go ahead and join this membership, y'all. Join the family. Join the initiates. Because the, 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 I'm talking about the transformations our people are going to experience is going to be incredible. But Ryan, did you have any... Any uh any any announcements to make for the people before they get up out of here? No, nah, no announcements, J A. Um, but I I I, I or Tyshawn, but J A, I do want you to talk to some of our our our, our ladies who are a little bit older. So, because we got a, I mean, the following is growing from twenty five to fifty five is where our most following is at. But that forty five to sixty five is really growing, especially forty five to fifty five. Now, a lot of those young ladies are either newly single from, you know, pro uh, previous relationship or just haven't found uh, a person they can trust to move forward with a long term relationship. So I know you come across, I mean, women and men of all ages. So is it anything in particular that you can a message you can give to those women who are between the ages of 45 and 65 that are still looking for somebody to finish out the rest of their life with? Yeah. So. So two things. For one, I would say make it a matter of prayer, right? Because, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, man, God be hearing prayers. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you pray for that that person, that companion, that spouse. And like, God hears it, bro. God don't want nobody out here just out here suffering, hurt, lonely by themselves. But at the same time, I would also challenge them to just go through a season where they love themselves and they at peace. When they get to a point where they like, you know what, I'm going to date myself. You know what, I'm going to treat myself. You know what? I'm gonna I'm take myself. I'm a Netflix and chill with myself. Like I'm a I'm a really value the time I have with myself. Cause so often we run from one relationship and jump into another because we don't want to fill that void of being alone. And so I think when you master that time of being alone and you have that sense of peace, there's a purity that comes there. Now to all those sisters that's like, look here, baby, I don't been alone for three, four years. <laughs> My man went through midlife. We got divorced. And I, I need somebody up in these beds with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel you there. Make it a matter of prayer. Uh, but I think the scary part, though, is that um, when people are thirsty, they'll drink anything. And that's for men and women. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody's super thirsty and you famished, like, you'll eat whatever they put in front of you. And so you got to be very intentional about making sure you keep yourself in the best place, in the best position. So that when somebody does come your way, you you your spiritual receptors are up and you know, okay, this person good for me or not. Because I know folk that are amazing and gorgeous and it's taking every opportunity that come their way because they just really want to be with somebody. Yeah. And this is like, nah, you got to be with yourself and have the inside peace and be okay with being alone and be single until God sends you who you're supposed to have for the rest of your life. No thirsty energy. Yeah. I like that though. I like that because yeah. um, people you know, who are thirsty or drink anything. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But we we found in that um, we just get a lot of messages. Cause we get, like I said, 25 to, to 55 is where we at, men, both men and women. But lately we just been getting a lot of messages from our women that are 45 to 65. And they're like, yo, 
Like, don't leave us hanging with this mm. content. That's like, so true. We need something that specifically addresses our situation. But I think that is a, a very good uh, resolution because I think a lot of those women, because we speak to them, mm -hmm. they're amazing women. Right. And they are amazing to everybody else mm -hmm. outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so I really do think that season of being alone and caring for yourself and, and putting yourself as a priority yeah. can go a long way in positioning them, helping them position themselves to get that long term relationship that yeah. they're looking for. Yeah. And I'll say this, like you deserve love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you deserve somebody to take care of you. You deserve somebody to wine and dine you. You deserve somebody to rub your feet at night. You deserve somebody to put fresh flowers in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Every week, like you deserve that. You know what I'm saying? But until you get that, you got to know how you treat yourself so that when the guy does send you somebody, you can say, okay, this is how you treat a queen. You know what I'm saying? So the same way you take care of yourself should be a reflection of, okay, this is how I've been taking care of me. So if you're going to be the man in my life, like this is what I've accustomed to. I'm accustomed to traveling a certain type of way. I'm accustomed to eating. I'm accustomed to going to certain places. I'm accustomed. I treat myself this way because I love me. If you love me, I'm expecting you to treat me the same way. And so I would say to go on that journey of really loving yourself and really loving God and watch who he sends your way as your companion. I like that, man. And there you have it. Yeah. Mic drop. Nothing else to be said, y'all. As a matter of fact, first of all, let me personally thank you, J.A., yeah. for coming up in here and blessing us, blessing the people. If y'all just got blessed by J.A., just put blessed in the chat real quick. Yeah, let me uh, just go ahead. See. Drop a bless. Hey, show, show J.A. what's going on in the oh, chat right now. Yeah, we got see. some birthdays, too. So he can see too. what's happening. So you're going to see the chat really going crazy right now. You're going to see the blessed dropping them. Drop the blessed in the chat. If y'all just went ahead and got blessed here tonight, listen, we really appreciate y'all and we love y'all. This mm. Wednesday upcoming, we got Coach King Canyon coming up on here. Our first, ever, our first ever Harley in Love segment is going to be here. We talking dating. This day, today was marriage. Listen, y'all, listen, y'all, we feeding the soul, okay? So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned in here with us. Continue. Y'all know how we do it. We're gonna let y'all go in here and hang out in the chat. Have a good time. Please, family, before we get out of here, I just want to see five new initiates join the family in the chat before we get up out of here. Let's just shout out to five. Shout out to Kathy Johnson for sending over that yeah. super chat. Yo, yes. this is big. Shout out to Shanae. Just turned 54. Come on, okay. Shanae. Shout yes. out to, uh, we got another birthday in here. Shout out to A. Evans. Says, newly initiated at 50 years old. Wow. Shout out. Shout out. And uh, who else we got? We got another birthday in here. Fully shout initiated. out to Joyce, who just turned 56 on wow. the 20th. So this is wow. what I mean, Jay. Yeah. We got know. the we got these these lovely ladies in here of all ages and also men of all ages that are really just looking to improve themselves and really looking to you know find themselves in a, a loving fulfilling relationship. Straight up. But, so, uh, so yeah. yeah, make sure listen again. Make sure y'all live up in here on Wednesday because if especially if you're in that dating phase, listen, we about to get you right. So look, go ahead and while we in here hanging out, go ahead give us that like. Give us the subscribe, all you ghost look, you ghost watchers that's watching us every day and not subscribing. <laughs> just hit that subscribe for us real quick, okay? And we're gonna drop, uh, we're gonna drop Jeremy Anderson's Instagram in here, prolific brother. Oh, it's already this, in listen, there. Listen, this is who, this is the kind of brother y'all need to be following on y'all Instagram. Unfollow the big booty girls, y'all ladies. Unfollow Shade Room and all the other nonsense. Follow JA because this man is a light Thanks. in real life. And he's gonna be a light on your timeline as well. Shout out he's to a light Kimberly every time he comes here on the Harley Initiated platform, and that's what it is. You're shout out to Kimberly for just sending over that donation via PayPal, and shout mm -hmm. out to Yali. Yali, we love you too. You are definitely uh, it's so many people. It's at least I got a probably a list now. It's growing of about fifty people that I'm very excited to meet once we have our first in person event. So which is coming Yali, soon. Yali definitely one of those for sure. But look, we're gonna just leave it at that, y'all tonight. All right, y'all go ahead and get some sleep. Harley Initiated, we. Oh, out. Boom.